examples in engineering applications. So actually, I'm from agriculture engineering domain. So I'm I'm going to brief uh, the application of artificial intelligence in agriculture, as well as uh, the, my current role that is a. Uh, so you know, I'm presently I'm working as a software engineer here. So in the so the, that case study also I'm going to brief you. So yeah. So what I'm going to cover in this uh, three hour session. So first thing is that what is a machine learning? I think since five days, I think you have been hearing this term. What so what is a machine learning? Then also what about what are machine learning pro? Uh, I mean classification of machine learning models and the different types of computer vision models. We will see different types and also we have a session on a Python programming also. If you want to work with cameras, if you want to work with image data set, how to work that, how to work on. So that thing and uh, what is advancement that has been happened since past, uh, I mean, 10 that years. Sound come good. That I'm going to work on that. So, and also we uh, actually, I'm also works on a little bit uh, autonomous vehicles, not fully robotics vehicles. So how we fabricated that and what is the components of it? So a little bit uh, hardware components also we will discuss. So coming to the just first slide. Yeah. So, so what is a machine learning? I think uh, you know, <laughs> machine learning. If you come to the uh, artificial intelligence, so artificial intelligence is a globe. In that, uh, machine learning is one part. In, within that, we have, we know we call it the deep learning. So I think you will understand by, after going this presentation, you will understand the what is the exact difference between the artificial intelligence and machine learning. I mean, sorry, machine learning and deep learning. So you can see here. So machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence. It is defined as a computer's ability to learn from the data. So what we are doing in the machine learning, we are providing the ample amount of data set to the algorithms. So we will also see the types of algorithms. So we are providing the data set to the models and that learning from the data set. Why you are learning and why we want to make them learn to imitate the intelligence human behavior uh, for decision making and prediction. Since our birth, we also been trained, okay? Since our childhood, we also been trained by the society, by surrounding peoples, our parents, our relatives, all, by, by seeing them and they trained us. So by showing something, yeah, he's our mother. And she, I mean, she's our mother, he's our father. So like that, we have been trained. So this is the way machines also will learn. So we will provide the data set, they will learn. So if you come to the machine learning, so generally, broadly, we will classify as a, Broadly, we will classify as a two types. Uh, I mean, three types. One is supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, and reinforcement learning. So, especially reinforcement learning, we use the robotics. So, we are not discussing here about robotics. So, supervised and unsupervised learning. So, what is the exact difference between the supervised learning and unsupervised learning? We will learn in the next slide. So, so where we are using machine learning? So, generally, we will see, uh, we generally work with the image data set. We also work with the text data set. So if you work with the image data set, especially, then we generally call it a computer vision. Computer has a vision. So that is called a computer vision problem. In my presentation, most of the cases, we will talk about a computer vision only. Then NLP, it's a natural language processing. So what is mean? We, we know we are now are speaking. Now we are reading the document. So all of them are text processing. So everything comes under the natural language processing. Next one is, time series problem. So we already know that we know time series. So in the time series, we generally every day we'll see the Google, Google. So what about the today temperature? What, what about the tomorrow? Whether there is a rain in a, you know, in a week time. So like that we need to see that called the time series problem. So there also we are using the machine learning. Then anomaly detection. So the best example for the anomaly detection is something odd events occurs. Maybe you take any fruits. Maybe you want to detect the some uh, diseased one. So what we do is that uh, we will collect the healthy fruits first. So we will collect the healthy fruits first. We will we'll try it. So now the, the, the model knows about the healthy fruits. Then if you, uh, then so suddenly if you give the some unhealthy fruit, so it will it'll, it know about the healthy fruits. So it will tell you that, yeah, something is odd is detected. So that is, so it will tell you. So this is the way that anomaly detection works. Next is generative AI. So nowadays we know about the chart GPT. So what is the generative AI? So you see that uh, we will discuss in the future, next slide, there is a classification problem. So in case of simple classification problem, what will happen is that 
if you give an image, it will tell you that whether it is a human or human. It means just one, one what you call one label will come as output. But in case of gender to A, present, no, I mean, in the, now we are we're talking too much about the gender like chart GPT. What will happen in the chart GPT? We will give the prompt something uh, or how to install the Python. So it will give the, this much of text. Okay. Maybe you want a, a generated one uh, image. Okay. Maybe you want a rose flower or something one uh, kid is playing with dog. Something you will give, give a prompt. It will generate the, some. Uh, it understands the prompt that is NLP. Then it creating image. So like this, the such things is called a generative AI. So that things are called generative AI. So chart GPT and uh, large language models that comes under the this category. So now I already may mention you that uh, what supervised machine learning and unsupervised machine learning. In case of supervised learning, what will happen is that you can see in this in this image we have the input data and there. So in case supervised learning, what will happen is that maybe you have the Apple data set and uh, during the training process, we will do that. We will give the Apple image data set along with the label also I will tell. So you can see that um, you need to familiar with the terminology. So in the statistics, we will, we will call as a dependent variable, independent variable. So similar in if come to the machine learning. So dependent variable is called, a, we, can, we can call it as a response variable or label. We can call it uh, response variable, label variable, another name also there response label and target variable yeah three names are there for the dependent variable in case of independent variable we'll call as a response variable or uh, uh, features we call as a features so here uh, i'm giving the apples and i'm telling that is the apple images so now the this is one class maybe again i will give the banana and i will tell that this is a banana so now machine learning model will try to learn the extract the features from a given data set and understand that Okay, now it is a little bit trying. I will tell you what are the stages are there in the machine learning model training also. Then if you give the new new image, so it will tell that, yeah, it is apple or banana based on the learning, it will tell. So in case of unsupervised machine learning, in case of unsupervised machine learning, in case of unsupervised machine learning, what will happen is that I will not tell about the label. I will give the bunch of fruits and I will tell the model is that maybe I will give the bunch of fruits and I will tell that this bunch in this bunch of fruits, I have four classes or five classes. Sometimes I will tell, sometimes I will don't tell. Based upon the machine learning model, I will I will act. So maybe in case of K-means clustering is the best example for the unsupervised machine learning. There, I will give the bunch of data set. Maybe features I will give that. And you try to classify it. Okay. Maybe in this bunch of uh, bowl, I think we have some fruits. It consists of four classes. Yeah, you classify it. So that is called unsupervised learning. So we can see that in this file, in this table, I made it x1, x2, x3. So these are the features variable. These are the features variable. And target. Target is I'm telling you, maybe you can take is x1 is the some color of the fruit, x2 is the some shape, some something features we are taking here. And I'm telling that is the apple. And some features I'm taking, uh, color, shape, something I'm telling banana. So this is the way if you give the data set to the any machine learning model, that is called a supervised machine learning. In case of unsupervised learning, we don't provide the target variable. You try to classify yourself. So that is the way some unsupervised machine learning algorithm works. So what is the exact difference between the human vision and the computer vision? So we are just, uh, I'm speaking about the computer vision and the human vision. So as a human beings, we have the eyes, we have the brain, we have the five sensing organs we have. So especially in case of computer vision, I'm talking about the eyes only. So we see the society, and we observe the things and then our brain will process it. Then it will take an action. Like uh, I'm giving the fruit data set. Then it will tell you, yeah, yeah, this is an orange and this is a banana. This is a pineapple. This gives you something it is linked. So in case of computer vision, what is the difference? Yeah, similar to similar to human vision. We have the cameras. What may be the or, uh, USB cameras or uh, CC cameras. What may be the camera type? Maybe in a camera type, so we have the an RGB camera, thermal imaging, I mean, thermal cameras, um, multi-spectral hyperspeed cameras also there. So we will get the feed from that cameras. Then interpreting device. Uh, here we have the brain, that may be the machine learning model, will be trained on this data set. Then it will, based on the training, it will give that, yeah, this is the orange, this is a banana, so this is a banana. So this is the way our computer vision models will work. Uh, there is a just common difference between human vision and computer vision. It is similar to that. It is similar to the human vision, the way human is learning, so machine learning model also will learn. So you come to now, so in case of especially computer vision, 
in case of computer vision. Uh, so there are generally six types or four to five types are there, but generally three types of models are there. First, we generally, if you see any research paper also, we will try, we will generally encounter uh, papers on image classification, object detection, and image segmentation. So actually, we need to understand, uh, means if you don't know about these certain classes and types of, uh, about these classes, it will be very difficult to understand the research papers. So just, we will see first what is the image classification. So in case of image classification, the definition is, we are assigning the labels to the entire image. So just this is the English meaning for that image classification. Now we will go deep dive into that. So you have the fruits here. I have the, just have taken the four classes here. First is banana, then is orange, then is apple. Next one is a lemon. So we have the four classes are here. So I'm, I'm telling this as the image classification. So what is the mean, mean, meaning of here? So you see that in a banana, so in, we'll go for the image classification when there is a only single class is present in an image. When you capture an image, there is a chances only single class is present. I'm not talking about the number of fruits. Maybe banana, 10 bananas or 20 bananas or whatever maybe. Count is not the matter. Only classes matter. Yeah. In a, if you take another image, in that image only orange class is present. Only if you take a second image something, we capture that only second, only orange, orange is present, orange class. Next, apple. Um, what are maybe the count of the apples? So it is easy. It's a no, no issue. But the problem, but the thing is that we must have same class, single class in an image. So the that is a, so in that case, we will go for the image classification. So we have the different types of models. I will tell you. So this is an image classification problem. So maybe in the real world, this may not possible every time. Maybe sometimes two, maybe orange and banana may present a single image. Maybe sometimes uh, three, a banana, orange, apple, three may be present in a single image. Sometimes four also may be present in a single image. So in that case, what can we do? Maybe just take one example. Maybe in a given image, we have go, you capture one image in that apple and uh, yeah, banana and orange might have present. So if you use the image classification problem, so what you will do? Because this image has a probability of uh, classifying as a banana 50 percentage and orange is 50 percent because the image consists of two categories. So in that case, we cannot go for the image classification problem. So we can go for the only image of, sorry, we can go object detection. So we'll come to that. So, so in case of object detection, what will happen is that we need to find out, the, you can see it for definition, find the multiple things and their location also. So what I'm actually, I'm giving a small example here. Uh, this is the, our work, this is also published. So in the CA Bhopal, we worked on this one, yield estimation. So there, our objective is that we go to the orchard field and we capture the orchard, I mean, uh, that uh, orange uh, citrus trees, uh, citrus trees of um, photos with the drone. Then our goal is that we want to count the, count it and also we want to find out the how many ripening fruits are there and uh, how many unripe fruits are there in a given tree. That is our goal. So in that case, what we have done, what we have done is that, so we have gone for the object detection problem. So you can see in the given tree, in a tree, we have the harvest ready, harvest, harvest fruits are there and also unripe fruits also there. So now we train a model, object detection model that is YOLO. We train that model, that model is able to count how many, uh, how many harvest ready, I mean ripened fruits are there, how many unripe fruits are there. It will also give the count, yeah, unripe fruits are uh, 20, 30 something, ripen are the, maybe 100, 200, like that. So it will give you, count also will give. In that case, we need to go to the object detection. So what about image segmentation? So in case of image segmentation, if anybody ask, asked you that, okay, I want to measure the object size. So someone asked you that, okay, I want to use the computer vision. I don't want to use the um, physical method like uh, by taking scale and if I want to measure something dimensions. So if you want to replace that, then we can go for the image segmentation. Why I'm telling about image segmentation? In case image segmentation, what we will do that? Because here you can see in this example, you can see that in the segmented image, I, I try to extract the fruit region. So now I have the only, only fruits are present in a segmented image. By using he, by using the segmented image, now I, now I can go for the, it's a diameter of the fruit. I mean, it's a perimeter of the fruits. So many things, many physical, I think physical parameter, we can say length, area, so water maybe, we can measure it. So 
for that purpose we need to go for the image segment so this is general three broad classification of the machine learning, i mean computer vision problems so based upon the problems we need to select the model and we have to train the machine learning models so um, previously i have discussed about three so uh, there is image classification object detection and semantic segmentation so there is a small difference between the semantics actually ants are present you see that here in the image classification a only ants are present only ants class is present that is okay now someone asked you to that how many ants are present how many count then we'll go for the object detection problem next one is what is the okay someone asked you to that no no i want to separate the uh, foreground and background means foreground is ants uh, hence and background is a maybe soil background or something. You want to separate it. Then we're going to go for the sem semantic segmentation. Then someone asked you that, no, no, I want individual. Individual ends I want. Individual individual um, uh, ends pixels I want. Maybe maybe they want by size something, density, something else to want. They want to know the, uh, maybe hence uh, space occupied in a given image. If you want to go that, then we need to go for the instance segmentation. These are generally four types. Along with that, some nowadays we have the post estimation models are there. Uh, nowadays we have the post estimation models are there and tracking. So what is mean by post estimation models? We have uh, some case studies also. Presently we have been working on that. So post estimation models. This is just example I can give you that. So maybe whether the person is sitting, whether is the person is standing, whether it's walking, something you want to know that. So we can estimate even uh, even it is also similar to the animals also. What animal is doing? So we can also use this post estimation models for this purpose. Next one is tracking. Okay. Thing is that in the dairy, uh, we have the, maybe you take a cows are there. So whether the cow is eating or not, whether the cow is taking the feed or not, whether the cow is sleeping or not, something you want to uh, want to know the its activity, what is doing from the day, from the morning to the evening, from the night, what is doing if you want to recognize its activity. Then we need to go for the tracking problem. Actually, generally, this is a broad classification of the computer vision problems. Then based on the problem, we can work on that. Next one is what about in agriculture? So I'm from agriculture background, I want to tell you here. So we already most of the fellows know about that. So in agriculture, we know the feed, feed and crop detection. So we want to nowadays uh, we are talking about the precision agriculture and smart agriculture. In case of smart agriculture, we want to it's a site specific matter. Actually, the traditional way what the farmers uh, do is that I mean they will try to spray the chemicals or herb. I mean it's maybe pesticide, it may be fungicide, it may be the herbicide. They will try to spray an enter enter. So they will uh, actually some recommendations are there. Maybe one hectare this much of herbicide to be applied. This much of pesticide they may be applied. So like that some that some categories are there. But now actually the the general thing is that pest may not be occurred. An entire an entire area. Maybe it, it may be in a few locations in a in an agriculture field. Now, with the help of this technology, artificial technology, we can find out the place where the feed infestation is there or pest infestation is there. We can detect it and then we can take an action. It may be if a pesticide, we can if a disease something is there, we can apply the pesticides. If a weed is there, then we can apply the herbicide. So, like this, we can go for the site specific site specific herbicide application. And next one is that and next one is that in a hard chart, if you want to in our chart, if you want to count the number of trees that is present in a hard chart. And also maybe your interest is that density of the plant, density of the orchard trees. So whether the all are uniform, there is an uniform is there, something you want to do that, then this analysis also will be helpful for us. We can go by drone, drone technology, drone nowadays fit, means drone fitted with the cameras, then we, we can go for the flight, then we can analyze this. So we can we get an idea about that how many trees are maybe we can also go for the health assessment and also we can we can see that how many plants are more dense density 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 I mean plants and means very small we can see vegetation then next one is weed kernel detection so that is also one you can also go for the yield estimation if you know the number of weed kernels present in it uh, in a given area in a one hectare of land then we can easily count the we can also we can estimate the yield. The next one is yield, yield estimation. I already explained you. Next is the solar solar panels defect detection. So you see that nowadays uh, we are mostly focusing on green green energy. Maybe solar solar panels, the solar technology will generate solar electrical energy. We are mounting these solar panels on the roof. So inspection is very difficult. We can climbing is very difficult, and we can't see the top view of the solar panels. 
So for that purpose, what we are doing, maybe if we use the drone technology, then we can go, we can see it's whether the solar panel is okay or not. Maybe is there any dust accumulation or is there any uh, rust is there? So everything we can analyze it using artificial intelligence. Okay. Next is cow detection. I already told you about that. Next we'll go that. So presently in the now I come to the software sector. So I will tell you some few case studies that I have been working on that so that because you will have a glance about not only agriculture, you have the different industry, industry process that we can understand. So you can see here. So here, uh, this is uh, this project is on personal protection equipment detection. So we know that. So during the working workers ask in the con construction workers or import. So wherever it may be. So it, it has to wear the uh, means uh, this uh, cap or vest. Okay, uh, shoes and glasses and gloves. So and so, so many things. I think six seven categories are there. They must wear it. Otherwise, if something incident happen in the that uh, workplace, so they may be injured. So that is the purpose. Uh, now, now this is a, now this is a mandatory now. So what we are doing is that in this case, we build we trained a model on this data set. So I will also tell you how to train how to build such a models. Okay, uh, is a. Oh, how to train these models, I will tell you. Okay. In this in this model, you can see that what you are doing is that we are, we are trying to identify the person, then also vest, okay, safety vest, mask, whether the person wear the mask or not, then I think glasses are, I think there is no glass, I mean, spectacle here, I mean, class, then cap. So we can they are also telling that how many persons are present in, the, in that image, how many, how many how many persons are unsafe? If a person is wearing all this category, we are considering it, we are considering them as a safe. Otherwise, not safe. So this is the way we are training the model. Next one is that okay, if the person is found with unsafe, so what will happen? So we are building them. So we are adding this feature to this model that it will automatically send a message to the uh, respect to person. Maybe it's a manager or someone else. Besides, you have someone not wearing the protocol. They are not they are not following the protocol. So this is the alert message will be sent to the particular person. So email is sent, email or SMS or maybe some alarm, uh, something. But something we can we can keep it. It's a, it's an hour and a half. In a, in a, it is an hour hand. Whatever want whatever the thing you want you can do that. So this is the one case study we have been working presently. Next one is that fall detection. So in, in the industry problem, actually several persons may work in the industry, I mean, in the workplace. So maybe if no one, if someone is there near to him, then it is okay. If no one is there, so maybe the risky for his health. So what the, for that to avoid that problem, so we are using this computer vision problems only, computer vision models. So we are trying to find out uh, is uh, what you call a pose. I told you already the pose estimation, whether the person is standing, whether what the what is the pose of this person. Well, we are trying to find out the fall detection. If something is standing, it is okay. If something fall is happened, so our model will detect it and will send the message to the particular person. So this is the way we are training you now industry, industry problems. We are trying to solve this. You can see that here also. So something happened, it will, it will throw an alarm. So this is the way we are using, we are also using computer vision only here. So next one is that, okay, not only in the industry, in the construction sites also, we can we can monitor this, whether the person are wearing helmet or we can inspection, we can use this computer, uh, this technology as an inspection purpose. We can see these videos. These are real world videos. We are gathered from this construction uh, person. So it will try to identify the, <clears throat> all the classes best. And also we can, in this also, we can see here. So if you don't wear this, we so it's not following the protocol, then it, the alert message will be sent. So we are also trying to keep the face recognition also. So what is the, if a person, some X1, so not wearing the protocol, is not painted in the protocol. So like that, we can send an alert. So this is the way we can do that. We can use this technology. So next one is that I'm also working on some project like a smart city, smart city project. We can see here that, so I have built a model uh, that uh, 
So it try to count the number of cards. So even if you go to YouTube and uh, some, uh, you will find such videos. So with my passion, I've been working on that. So I built the model, I trained the model on the cards especially. Uh, so it will, it will give the number of cards that is present in a given image. So this is one example we can use the, our uh, machine learning, I mean, computer vision problems. It's all on object detection models only, these object detection models. Next one is that, so you have a parking, uh, maybe parking space, there you want to know the uh, space available. Okay, maybe you are gone for a movie or somewhere else you are gone or you are gone to institute or somewhere else. So whether the space is available or not. So at that parking space, uh, so we, with the help of this computer vision, we can do that. Whether the parking space is available for our car or not, we can do that with the help of the computer vision. So another case studies we have been working in working is that the yard. So our our main goal is that how many containers are present in a yard. So with the help of this computer vision, this is an object detection problem. We have been solving this one. So we try, again we are using like, uh, object detection only. So our we are mounting this uh, system. I mean. A camera along with the processor, I mean, let's say a Jetson Nano board. So uh, we, we try the model, we build the model, we deploy this model, the Jetson Nano. So one vehicle will move along the road. So it will try to detect it, whether how many containers are present. You, you can see a number here. So this number is called as a confidence in the confidence score. So what is the confidence of that model that this is the container? 0 0.95, 0 0.98, 9. So this is a confidence. This is this much of confidence that this is a container. Okay. Uh, this problem also we are solving. Next one is that, yeah. So the thing is that, so our containers come from the different countries. So if she, the ships, they will come. So our goal is that, uh, it has a, it's like a bike. Uh, you see that, uh, you see that like uh, bikes, we have the uh, uh, like license plate. So it's a unique number. So for similar to that, this container also have the container number and ISO type, and also container weight is there, everything will be there. So what we are doing is that, so you see that even the single container is there, then no issue. So then multiple containers are present. So what we have to do? So in that case also, we are using technology. First, we are identifying the container, number of containers, and we are cropping each container and we are, we are extracting the each container number and ISO type using this technology. So what the generally the persons will do at port is that, by they will take the mobile phone and they will scan it something they will do that or they will manually they will write but now the technology is advanced they're using this technology uh, this artificial intelligence to uh, automate this process so that is i want to tell you our uh, next one is that so in the containers we have the different vehicles will come from the other countries uh, uh, or the car, car maybe trucks or bikes whatever goods will come so on each good there is a barcode will be there so generally what the persons will do that, maybe now automation is going on. So what the person is, that one person will stand there or sit there. So while cars are coming from the that uh, port, so they will try to scan that manually. So what now we are doing is that, so we are, uh, we are developing a technology. So the, 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 the thing is that the barcode may be present on any, it may be anywhere on the vehicle, front side, back side, on the right or left side. So we are mounting the cameras in four sides. And we are, so first of all, we are building the model. So we are building the model such a way that wherever may be the, our barcode. So our model try to identify the particular barcode and it's try to crop it. Then we can use for some other problem. Okay, once we have the barcode, every the, all the information will be in the barcode. We can retrieve it later. But so we are using technology here. Using this technology, we are extracting information. So here is a car, I mean, Actually, I'm, I'm showing here the car. So in the in the yard, we are using we have the lot trucks. Trucks will be there. Their mobile, I'm sorry, their number plate will try to identify it. Uh, which container is which container? Which which vehicle is carrying that container? So everything information we need to store for later purpose. So another thing is that quality inspection. Another thing is that quality quality inspection. So just a minute. Another thing is that quality inspection. Maybe, maybe you are uh, in the production unit. Maybe you are making the thousands or two thousands, thousands of cars at your production level. 
maybe you want to know that any scratches maybe i'm telling that is a i mean some car i mean tire is flat or scratches dent so many many things are there maybe maybe man also can do that so maybe man also can do that maybe number of cars are there something any scratches is there maybe you know production is over now you want to send them into the market so, so many times what will happen is that so production over so without seeing this quality inspection they will send to the uh, so, i mean seller I mean, they send to the market so my after going there after after going there maybe some scratches or some some fault may be found in the car so they will they will be rejected so because of to eliminate this process so using this maybe man, man also can do that but many more number of uh, vehicles will be there it's very difficult to that but technology we can use here we can see the scratches okay dent any dents are there any car flaw i mean tire flat is there so everything we can do a quality inspection also we can use this technology so we have been working on that so yeah now i know i mean so still now have covered many case studies that we have been working on that so what are the models are there what is the uh, behind so you are seeing the problem that we have solved so what is the behind so which who are working for that so you can see here this first class first first thing is a linet alexnet vgznet google net resnet so uh, swin transformer dense these are all the models this is these models are used for the classification purpose if only single class is present it may be single class maybe binary class or multi class classification problem i'm not talking about the single class maybe but in a given image only one class should be present so that case we can go for the classification linet alexnet which is nigen we can use this so in case of object in case of uh, this second second category is comes under the segmentation so you want to remove the background so that in that case and you want to estimate the size of that some the fruits or whatever may be that object you are interested we can use this model unit segment all these things next one is that object detection so in the most of the cases are uh, I I discuss about the object detection problems only. Faster RCN and YOLO, single shot, multi box detector, RCN and so retina net. So all this YOLO X. So all these models will be helpful for object detection problem. So which one is best? Is very difficult to say. We have to train the model, and we have to see the results. Which one is performing best in our data set? So better data set may be the different. Maybe single model may not perform well on our data set. So that is why. we need to work on a different different models then we need to see the their results based on that we can we can finalize the one single uh, when so a single model next one is that you go we'll go a little bit deeper into that so how these models are working so even in the real world we also see the objects and we will try to find the features is a not a feature is a features so we try to find out the features in a whatever may be object we see based on that we will go for the classification so generally uh, before the evolution of this machine learning i mean if, we, if you want to work with this machine learning something and especially automation process we need to we first see the color feature generally we will talk about this during my phd also first of all i ha heard about this features in the 2018 uh, 19 so color features we generally will see shape features or texture features so like this features we need to know first but and thing is that uh we need to go for the python code i mean maybe python code or matlab code or whatever may be the code so first we need to understand what is that and what is the python code available for that so we need to struggle a lot in order to start with automation so this is the features uh so these things we you should know before that so what will happen now so i will tell you where, what how the features will come with help of the image processing so now we will go to what is image processing so we today nowadays we are we are i mean capturing the tons of images every day okay so we are collecting the too many data say i mean image so what is an image so we can say that image is a two dimensional array because it consists of rows and columns uh, and uh, so it's made up of a finite number of elements is called a pixels so generally when uh, while i think we have will purchase a mobile phone also they will tell uh, that this much image resolution that this camera is like that so means we are talking about the number of pixels in a row wise or column wise we will talk about this you can see here in the given image we have the five cross five uh, matrix is there number of rows and the number of columns so each pixel consisting of a particular intensity value we can call it as a digital number so these elements act as a features for 
our model training. So we will go deeper, a little bit deeper dive into that. So first of all, uh, before going to that, so generally in uh, image processing, if you want to start, uh, if you want to start with an image processing, we'll uh, we'll come over uh, three types of three types. Color image like RGB image. Generally, we are capturing every day with our mobile phone. Then is a grayscale image and a binary image. So now I'm talking about the so, 8 bit image. So, in case of 8 bit image, we have the, so you see, in case of color image, we have the three channels red, green, blue. Okay. In case of grayscale image, we have only a single channel. In case of binary image, also we have a single channel. So, what is the exact difference? I will tell you. So, in case of color image, we have the RGB. So, our red channel also consisting of, uh, I think, 256, 256 grayscales. Okay. You can see here uh, one, two, three, four, like that. So many grayscale will be there, 256. So red channel also will have the 256 grayscales, uh, green channel also will have, and blue channel also will have. So that is the three channels, by combination of three channels, a color will be made. Then in case of grayscale image, for the grayscale image, actually there is a one formula will be there. If you go, if you see the MATLAB or Python code, there is a, one mathematical formula will be there. Grayscale is equal to 0 0.00 into R, plus or minus something 0 0.06 into B plus like that by combination of these three features uh, channels we will get the grayscale image but in case of grayscale image we have, the grayscale image only consists of single channel and uh, each pixel intensity values varies from 0 to 25 you see here this channel intensity also will vary from 0 to 25 this channel sorry this pixel I'm sorry this pixel intensity will vary from 0 to 25 this pixel also intensity will also be 0 to 25 so like this here also 0 to 255, but it consisting of three channels. But in case of grayscale image, only we have single channel. So what about the binary image? In case of binary image, each pixel intensity value either 0 or 1. Either 0 or 1 or 0 to 255. Either the, the pixel value may be the 0 or 1. So that is called a binary image. The image looks like a black and white image. So black and white image. So these are the general uh, three types of image types that we, you should know. So another color models, uh, we also a little bit in the processing students, uh, generally in agriculture or processing students, they will also study these models like uh, L star, A star, B star values. Actually in case of image processing also, in the Python also, we have the different as a color models. RGB, generally we, we get from the our camera when you capture it. Then uh, HSV models, uh, huge saturation value. Uh, next one is the uh, LAB, LAB and CMYK. So different as a color models are there. Maybe. So which model is best for our case? My case means I cannot say. It's, it's, it depends upon the product that you're using. And also the background, the product background that you're using. So that is also will affect on the type of color model. So we need to use. I will also show the Python code, how to uh, how to convert the from, because we when you capture an image, we'll get the RGB color, RGB color model. From the RGB color model, how to convert into the HSV or lab or grayscale image, I will, I will, I will tell you. So yeah, I already told you that uh, I will also tell about advancement of machine learning. So when when we do not know about the machine learning, so what the generally we do we do is that we did is that. So we'll take an image, and we we'll try to extract some features based on the person. If I if me if I tell that maybe I will take the uh, color features. Maybe someone some ex person if you want to uh, if I give this data set, you will take you may use the safe features. Uh, some third person, X2 person, if you give this image, image data like uh, apple and banana, he may use the uh, texture features. So it depends upon the person. He may extract the features, then he will try to see that, okay, if the red color, if the fruit is, uh, if the red red channel intensity is more, then maybe it's maybe apple, otherwise it's a banana. So like there's some threshold based approach, some rule based approach, we used to do that. So that is a traditional image, actually I can say is a traditional image processing approach. But what is the problem with this? Because you see banana is in yellow color. Maybe sometimes uh, uh, what lemon also is a ripened lemon also lemon color. Apple also red color. Some other fruits also maybe red color, cherry, sorry, berry fruits. So maybe if you go for a base of the color, may not work. Maybe sometimes shape also may not work. So some constraints are there. Another problem is that some intensity, lighting intensity. So we see that when you capture an image uh, in the room, light room, that it looks some some it looks different than if it's uh, captures the same image in the outside. So there is a problem because uh, 
the color, the pixel intensity values will strongly affected by the illumination intensity. So that there is a problem actually. If you go to the rule based, so there is some problem is there. So, so what will happen? Okay, uh, some rule based system. What will happen? I will tell you. So basic stuff. The image thresholding. So what is a thresholding? Uh, we actually we already we all know thresholding means uh, if you want to classify the persons based on the height. Uh, Maybe uh, tall or short. Maybe height uh, height is more than 150 centimeter. Is a tall person. 150 less than 150 centimeter. We call a short person. So that calls some threshold value, optimum value, so that we can categorize them. So like that, in case of image processing, also similar to that, thresholding operation divides an image into two or more classes of pixels, foreground and background pixels. So how to do that? I will tell you. Using so image processing. So first of all, what we need to do is that. First, we need to take an image. Maybe you are working with the image data set. That is what I'm taking as image. You take an image, first select the color channel. So in the previous slides, I explained you about the RGB color model, HSV color model, lab color model. I explained you. So which color model you want to take it? I already told you that it's based on the problem. Okay, it's a based on the problem, we will take that. Based on the problem, we will take that. Next, we need to choose the threshold value. Like I told you that with the height of the person more than 150 centimeter, it is a tall, otherwise short. So that threshold value we need to say, then we'll get the segmented image or output we'll get it. So now you'll see that. So first I have taken the image that is the soil and a, a plant region is there. Next, histogram. So we know that histogram in the x-axis have the intensity values. I already told you that this is a grayscale image. Okay, maybe single channel I'm taking. Maybe the red, the green, blue. So maybe the image is color image, but when you talk about the individual channels, we call it the grayscale image only. Uh, red is the one grayscale image, blue is the one grayscale image, uh, red, green, red, green, or blue. Blue is one grayscale image. Okay. So I have taken one image, one channel, and I pointed the histogram. Then you can see here that maybe most of the pixels, background pixels that falls at a zero or maybe few less than 15 in the x axis. In the x axis, we have the intensity values. 0 to 255. So x axis values 0 to 255. In the y axis, we have the pixel count. So maybe 50, uh, 50 is the grayscale intensity. How many pixels are there? So that, that intensity value 50. 50. Okay, 50 uh, grays that is channel intensity, the pixel intensity value 50. How many pixels are there? 50. 50 grayscale intensity. Like that. How many pixels are there? 150, 200. So like that, we can have a histogram. Then in the x axis, we can put a threshold. Yeah, maybe by seeing this uh, histogram, I can tell that. Okay, greater than the 100, maybe it is a, uh, means uh, I can put a threshold greater than 100, it is a green, otherwise soil background, I can tell, and then I can put a threshold. So just say, uh, if else condition in the Python code, you can write uh, syntax like this, if the pixel value is greater than some 100 or 150, the pixel intensity value will be higher, 255, otherwise zero. So now you will get the, it's called a binary image. So I already told you that, initially is a binary image. So the pixel, uh, Foreground pixel will have the pixel intensity value as a 255, the background pixel as a 0. So this is called as a binary image. So for, by, use, by using this binary image, then we can go for the far further. Maybe you want, now we have the four leaves are here. So what about the each leaf uh, area or what is the size of it? I mean, how many pixels uh, that uh, leaf 1 is occupying? How many pixels leaf 2 is occupying? If you want to go for the further analysis, we can do that. So this is the, uh, this is the I mean, sir, what you call that? Uh, and the, this advantage of uh, image, image segmentation. So we can do same thing using image image processing, traditional image processing. We can do same thing using object detection. I mean, object detection models also. But I told you now. So that if you use a machine learning, that is an intelligence based system. If you use this image processing, simple uh, this one color models, it is a uh, threshold based approach. Maybe sometimes due to lighting intensity, there is a, some changes may happen here. Uh, in, in intensity values, maybe sometimes the, this histogram may come here. Some some maybe overlap may also some happen. So at that condition, our threshold value may not work. Next one is so what are the threshold techniques are generally available? So simple thresholding. So just I told you that uh, in, the, in the previous slide I told you that one single threshold value is there. Okay, based on the I will analyze the histogram. Yeah, if greater than hundred or greater than fifty is a foreground or the background like that. It's called a simple thresholding. So sometimes adapt with another, with there are different types of techniques are there, but I mostly use these three techniques, adaptive thresholding and also thresholding. So what about the adaptive thresholding? Sometimes what will happen is that maybe you have, you have, you have an image, in this image maybe <clears throat> illumination intensity is not uniform. 
to enter to in the entire region of the image. So that times maybe it will give us some trouble. Means we don't get the this exact perfect image. We don't get it. Maybe sometimes some noise will be there. Sometimes some this plant this leaf pixel may classified as a soil pixels. Sometimes soil pixels may classified as a plant pixels. So these things will happen because of illumination change. Maybe when you capture image, sometimes brightness may not be uniform throughout the image through an entire in the region. So that time we cannot use just simple threshold techniques. That is there we will go for the adaptive threshold technique. So what will happen in case adaptive threshold technique? This algorithm will make the image into different boxes. In the next illustration is there, I will tell you that. So in the next image, we will try to uh, break the entire image into number of scale boxes. For each scale box, one particular threshold value will be there. So that is the way it try to uh, classify the pixel into foreground or background. Means in that case, we don't have a single threshold value. We have the number of threshold values are there. So that is the adaptive threshold technique. In case of arts threshold technique, what will happen is that. So the best thing is that in the arts threshold technique, so we don't need to find out the optimum threshold optimum threshold value. It is a statistical technique, okay? With a statistical technique, we try to find out the optimum threshold value for our, our problem. So what is mean optimum threshold value? Here you can see by see by analyzing this histogram, I'm telling that, yeah, greater than 100, it's a foreground or something, I'm finding out the threshold. But this also threshold will automatically find out the threshold value for our purpose. How it calculate? So some statistics is there under uh, intra class variance and within the class variance within the class variance some statistical for mathematical uh, formula is there so based on that we'll try to find out the automatic threshold value but there is a problem with the arts threshold i will tell that what is the problem so you can see that in case of simple thresholding in case of simple thresholding for entire image you have a single threshold value in case of simple threshold technique we have the <coughs> sorry in case of entire, entire image, the single threshold value. I'm telling that, yeah, if the particular pixel value is greater than 100, it is a four, it is a foreground or the background. Yeah, in the second image also, second pixel same, second pixel also same, third, fourth, like that. So single threshold value will try to compare with each pixels. And if it is uh, the condition satisfies, that become 255, else it is a zero. So that is it. But in case of adaptive threshold technique, what will happen is that due to the uneven, because it is our goal, we need to see which one is best for our image. Uh, so in, in case of adaptive threshold technique, what will happen is that the entire image will be divided into the number of blocks. You can see here, um, three by three, I think total nine, nine, I, I made image into nine blocks. So each, each box, each uh, square box, one threshold value will be selected by the model itself. The algorithm works like that. So then you try to uh, classify the image into foreground background. Sorry. So in case of arts, so what's the arts to in the case of arts threshold link, you see in the x axis, we will have the or uh, maybe it may be the water, maybe you take a red channel or a green channel, green channel or blue channel, what may be the channel you want to take it, you take it and you plot the histogram. So if the peak is like this, if two peaks are there, then this model, this algorithm, try to find out the best with yeah, I think this is the threshold value and it try to automatically find out it. But what will happen if sometimes like this? Maybe your, your image may not have the two classes because in my previous class, I have the plant pixels and soil pixels. So there is a definitely there is a provision that we have the two peaks. So we have the two peaks. In that case, it works fine. So what am, what will happen if you have a single, there is no peak, maybe something illumination intensity changes, something problem is there. So that times we do not know because the threshold value is dynamically selected based on the image, it will select it. So that time it will, it will, it will be a trouble. So that is why, and also sometimes there's a three peaks are there. Maybe here you see that you have only one peak is there. I mean, one, maybe another, another peak is there, which threshold will be selected, whether either this one or this one. So there is a conflict. So that is why it has some problem is there. So if you want to work with these models, I mean, if you want to work with these threshold techniques, we must control the environments, whether it may be the lighting conditions, it may be the camera height, so on the background, so what these things we need to take care of it if you want to use this. So that is why I'm calling this a traditional image processing techniques. We must have the control on this parameter means uh, factors that affecting effect on pixel intensity. Okay. So this is the deck. I will also show you how to use the Python code for this one. I will tell you that. So now, next one is that <clears throat> just a minute.
The next is that actually when you work with the uh, uh, remote sensing data set, generally we'll talk about the indices, uh, spectral and normalized waste, normalized difference waste and indices. Uh, some, something actually even I uh, use the excess green index and excess red index. So generally we use the, this index for the classification like uh, like color models, HSV, uh, lab color models and uh, YCRC color models. So same color models, I mean, similar to that, we have these indexes are there. So we'll try to calculate the index values for the plant pixels. Actually, I'm showing you the for plant, plant region and also for the same thing, same approach. This formula is for the excess green index is two into green channel intensity minus red channel intensity minus blue channel intensity. We'll try to calculate this for a value. I mean, this, this thing for the, uh, all the thing, I mean, for the uh, so plant region as well as for the soil region. Then we'll try to see. So if the plant region, and if you calculate this, uh, uh, this thing for this formula, apply for the a single channel, okay? We have the three channels here with the input is three channels. When you compute this one, we will have the only single channel. So here we'll see that when you find out what is this one. We also same thing we'll do for the soil pixels. We have the soil pixel will be here. Then we'll try to see that. So if the if the pixel in the pixel is plant, so what is the pixel intensity? 46. I think when you take it for the soil, it will be less than it, it will come as a 0, 10, 20, like that. So in that case, we can put a threshold value as yeah, if you get the 20, the soil it is a uh, plant region, otherwise soil. So like that also we can do. So now we come to the traditional machine learning. So I'm um, so what about what is the traditional image process? In case of traditional, sorry, traditional machine learning approach. So similar to the previous one, we try to extract the features manually. I mean, so we use uh, some like a red channel or green channel, blue channel, hue, HSV or lab. Some of the features we will extract from a fruit. That uh, maybe here I'm taking the apple and banana, and we'll try to create this data set like this. I will I will show you how to use this, how to do this in the Python code. I will tell you that. So like this, we we'll try to create the data set. Then instead of the threshold based approach, as a previously I said that maybe we need to find out the particular threshold value so that it is a male or I mean sorry, tall person or short person, otherwise soil background or I mean foreground or background. So here I'm using intelligence based system. So now I'm I'm not selecting any threshold value manually. So I'm I'm extracting the data set. I'm extracting the features from a data set, um, from the given data set. And I'm giving this ton, tons of data to my models. Are you learn it? You learn, yeah, if the red channel, green channel, blue channel, something intensity is this much, it is apple, or otherwise a banana, something you learn it, and you do that, you learn it. So now we are not going for the threshold based approach. This is one advancement. Okay. Then the next one is that this is called a traditional machine learning approach, simply. Then we call the deep learning approach, deep learning generally. So generally, so what will happen in case of deep learning? So here we are, when you use a simple models like cross-state regression, K nearest neighbor, support vector machine, random forest, AN. So actually AN does not come actually, AN comes generally here. So actually in case of deep, the learning is deep. So thing is that uh, our problems may not be linear problems. So some complexity will be there. So you see what is a linear, non-linear. Maybe classification of apple and banana may not be the that much complex problem by seeing eyes also we can tell that yes it is very easy you see that when the breed classification or uh varieties maybe banana variety something so banana all looks same similar to that but uh varied based on the varieties so some small difference is there in that condition using these models like you don't uh, so energy does not come here sorry so and under condition it's not possible to use that uh support vector machine uh, that uh, K, K, K nearest neighbors, run up, the such models. So we need to go for some advanced that is deep, deep means they will think very deep. So then we will go for the EN and especially. So this we can call as a deep learning approach here. Then I can tell as a, is the name is given based on my understanding. So advanced deep learning approach. So what will happen in case of advanced deep learning approach? So previously in the slides, I've been talking about the features. Maybe I extracted the red channel, green channel, blue channel, and huge channel intensity of the apple and banana. And I'm trying to um, give it to the classifier. We can, uh, with this ANN, it may be ANN, it may be a uh, subtractor machine, it may be the logistic, whatever it may be. It's called a classifiers. We call them as a classifiers, okay? 
we call them as a classifier. So we are giving them. But in case of advanced deep learning, especially, we do not extract the features that I did in the previous case. We do not, I, do, I don't do that. I try to construct the such a filters, filter banks, like uh, in the visual learning, uh, sorry, in case of image processing, we'll talk about the, uh, I mean, uh, what you call edge detection filters, uh, Gaussian blur filters. Uh, I mean, some filters will be there, median filters, can edge detection filters. So several filters will be there. So they have some specific purpose. Maybe I want to detect the edge in an image. So then I'm simply like, I know that I want to take the edge, then I will go for the can edge detection. If I want to enhance the brightness, then maybe enhance our, whether you know to increase or decrease it. So Gaussian blur. So like that, some filters are there, our specific size and some elements are already optimized. Some scientists, they optimize that. Yeah, yeah, if you use this filter, it will do some, some function. So like that, we have the, but in case of this deep learning, we do not know how, what filter to be used. What is what the filter I need to use for my purpose? Maybe I'm telling that uh, breed classification, maybe in animals, maybe you want to go for the breed classification, something. Okay. In that case, I do not know what feature to be used. For that purpose, I try, I try to construct the such filters. Maybe I cannot, go for, maybe if you, by color base, color base, if something is happening, you can go for that. But if color base, some shape wave, some texture base is not possible. So that approach is not meeting our goal, then we need to go for the advanced deep learning. So because do you know, so now I can become a doctor. I mean, so how I'm telling. Because if you give the bunch of data set of a brain cancer, something, and if you tell me that, yeah, these images are a healthy person, this image, um, that is, uh, image is because of some brain cancer, something is it. So if you give me that, now I, I can make a model that classifies that image, like a doctor. So because now I do not know what feature to be extracted from that, but this feature extractor, we call these filters from the convolutions to the pooling. This network is called as a feature extractor. So this will help us a, <clears throat> one experienced person. So he knows for an experience, I means doctor, some experience, based on experience, he will tell that, yeah, this person is healthy, this person is healthy. So he knows what features to be extracted. So these uh, filters are kind of filters will act, uh, will work on uh, your input image and try to extract the features, then it will send you to the ANN again. So the, the classification is whatever maybe you can use the ANN you can use, we can use the KNRS neighbor, whatever the model you want to use here, output you can use it, but the feature extraction is taken care by the, uh, <laughs> this convolution layers. We will try to go deeper dive into that. So what is the convolution? What is the pooling? I will tell one by one. So if I want to talk about the more advanced deep learning network, so what will be there? So in case of convolution neural networks are essential for the, especially analyzing images. So it's mostly used for the image analysis. So they play a critical role in interpreting the visual data, including the image classification. The same CNN networks are used in the image classification, object detection, and medical image analysis also. So what are the part, what are the components of it? So, okay, I'm telling that it extracts the features. So what are the components are there? How, how, able, how, it, how it is able to extract the features? So, because of convolution layers, because of pooling layers, okay, this uh, this layers will help uh, help the model to extract the salient features from an image. So now we will see what is actually we studied everything in the I mean intermediate some it's a basic math only. <laughs> so you see that in the convolution means this layer uses the filters or kernels to find the local patterns and features from the input image. So as I told you earlier that I. <clears throat> Is similar to the can edge detection filters or a gas in blur or whatever may be that. So they are so they are the filters only. So they have some particular pixel density values, means their values will be normalized. It means the, if you say a can edge detection filter also, some elements will be there one, minus one, zero, two, something. So they are a customized one. So if you if you multiply uh, the, the particular pixel value with the input image. So you will get the edge, edge detected image. Means the in image, edge will be detected. So that is the predefined, that is the optimized one. So now, similar to that, we have the filter here, three by three, and three filters are there. You can multiply with you. See, when I if, if I see three by three filter acting on an input image, the single channel, 170, 245, 0, like that is there. So this is a filter. So filter kernel both are same. So minus one into 170 plus zero into 245. 
and one into zero. So like like this, you get a final one single value. So finally, you get it. So this is where this convolution will happen. Next one is that the pooling layer. So <clears throat> it's a pooling layer. Nothing else. in the pooling layer. It will down sample the image. So I will tell you why we are working on this. I will just in a in a three after three four five you will understand why we are working why we are doing these all the mathematical operations and input image why don't you use directly pixel intensity as the input features to the our model i will tell you in a so in case of max pooling in case of pooling operation there is an average pooling is there max pooling is there so nothing is there in case of this pooling operation maybe scale maybe two by two for three by three it is a filter size our wish in a two by two it will take the in case of max pooling is a one two five six. What is the highest value? Six is the highest value. It will take a six value. In, in this in, the, in this filter, when acting on this image, three four seven eight. So what is the highest value? Eight. So it will take it. This is the output of this image. Then in case you can take the average pooling, just average of this all the four elements. So that is only. So nothing difficult here. <clears throat> then padding operation. So padding is that actually. Wow. So that what is the, that mean? You see that when when you capture image, some sometimes there is a overlap between the two objects. When the uh, one man is behind the other man, so some overlap is there. That times uh, detection is very problematic. So that is why this padding will help us. Padding and sliding, this operation will help us. Okay, padding means you see that without padding and with padding. So without padding means the image says actually water may be uh, same, maybe it will go into the next layer. But in case of padding operation. Some extra pixels, you see, 0, 0, 0, 0 will be added. Okay. So that is only padding operation. Sliding operation means sliding window. So how many, okay, one time conversion happened on the 3 by 3 image. So how many pixel, how many pixel it has to move forward, okay, side or downside. So that is stride. You can see that here. Uh, if, uh, I think stride is 2. So it moved 2 pixel distance. Okay. Then here stride is 2. It moved 2 pixel distance. So then I will get the last output like this. So these are operations are there. Next final one is the flattening one. Just so flattening operation. We extract the features, then we make into flatten this layer. This will be these flattened features will be sent into the your classification layer. It may be the ANN, it may be the uh, supported transmission, whatever it may be. So these features, what I'm talking now is initially what I did. I try to extract the red channel intensity, green channel blue. So it's similar to that. I manually extracted such features, but here my model extracted these features. Each each pixel is the one features. Feature one, feature two, feature three. So like that. Okay. So now you see. Actually, if you actually this is a PG sixteen. Actually, when you if you if you start working with deep learning area, so we generally hard about the pre-trained models or transfer learning models. We will call. I will tell you what is that. But okay. Just now we talked about the different operations like a uh, uh, convolution layers, uh, max pooling layers, stride operations. So what we want to do that? Why we want to do that? So you see, actually the image here I'm taking medical image that is size is two twenty four into two four two four into single channel. Okay, it's not a uh, colored color channel. I mean color image. <clears throat> it is a single channel image. Two twenty four into two twenty four into it's a grayscale image. So if you multiply two twenty four by into two twenty four, <clears throat> we'll get uh, the total count is pixel count is. 50,176 pixels. That means your model uh, have an input of 50,176 features. X1, X2, X3, X4, like that. This many pixels, uh, raw pixel intensity will send into the network is very problematic and uh, learning the patterns is very difficult. So, okay, it's very difficult to take, the, take this many features and try to learn that. But you see, when I use, after using these convolutions and uh, pooling and striding and uh, all these operations flattening, then, so the last input is, last output is 7 cross 7. Means the input image size is 224 by 224. I mean here, 224 by 224 into single channel. Output of this network is 7 by 7 into 512. Okay, 7 cross 7 into 512. This is the output image. So you see now the image size is reduced from 224 into 224 into 7 cross 7. This is a small image size, 7 cross 7 pixels. Only 49 pixels are there. I mean 49 and 512 channels are there. 512 features are there. So this many features are extracted with the help of this, uh, this network, which is which is 16. Okay. Initially, when I send this image into the my network, I have only single channel. 
the image size 224 by 224 into 1. But after sending this my image into this network, the final output is 7 cross 7 into 5112. So 5112 features, okay, is that there with a, this much image size. Now what is output to 25,088 pixels are there. Now because of, of a we off pixel, we off off amount of features has been reduced, reduced to off. Then this has not a lot of pixels. This feature extraction is taken uh, taken place. These are the uh, features will help us for better classification. So so what is the pre-trained models? <clears throat> so uh, I will give best example about this one is maybe in the some country some person might have used some this model for his purpose. Maybe uh, he maybe in. Maybe in the Australia somewhere else, someone using this model for elephant or elephant, elephant, a cow, something classification. You use this model. He trained it. Okay. So now this model knows if you give an image, if you give any image, elephant or cow, it, it will try to classify it. Same model, if you want to same model knowledge, if you want to use it for your case, maybe you also want to do the same purpose. <clears throat> or some modification is there, maybe African elephants and Indian elephants. Looks same, but some difference is there. Some similarity will be there. Some difference is there. So maybe, so instead of starting your training from the scratch, you take that uh, trainer architecture and you start using, it's called pre-training. You use that memory transfer uh, transfer learning. So that the memory you use it, again, you retrain your model instead of starting from the scratch. So that is called as a mm, transfer learning or pre-trained. So pre-trained models. So that a weight file will be there. That weight file we can use it. I will tell you what is a weight file also. Okay. So that thing. So if you want to start it, maybe our participants are from the academics, from the research background. So if you want to train your model, what you need to take care of it. Especially we generally nowadays we are training deep learning models only, the CNN based one. So first one is that number of layers. So what is the number of layers? So this one I'm talking about. Uh, so this is the one convolution layer one, convolution layer two, three, four, and five. <clears throat> so these are number of number of convolution layers. Sorry, uh, what do you call? These are number of filters. These are number of number of convolution layers. And within the each convolution layer, how many filters you want to take it? So that is one trial and error. It's called hyperparameter. We does not know. We do not know. Sorry, we do not know how many filters to be taken. So here I've taken six, means this is a pre-trained model. Someone, next person used it, okay? So 64 filters are used in the first correlation. Next one is 128. Next one is 256, 512. So this is the way that uh, trend will go. So that is one hyperparameter. Then size of the kernels, whether it's three by three, whether it is either it is three by three or five by five, so like this. Next one is tried. How many strides? Two or one padding. So these are pooling layers, activation functions. So batch size, I will tell you what the batch size of the thing. So I will tell. So some optimizers, everything I will tell. So, <clears throat> so what is the importance of this? So you see in this model, I mean, some of flow chart uh, given here. So just uh, for make you understand. So how the model training process will happen. Okay, you have the training data set, something is there. Maybe banana, uh, what you call, uh, are in the apple and banana is there. Uh, apple and banana. So, so you are taking the apple image and your model is telling that it's an apple, okay? Actually, it's banana, okay? You remember that it's actually is apple. The true target is apple. So that input only we're giving here. Model is telling that, okay, it's a target. It's predicting that it's apple. So the last function is zero. So last score also zero. Then feedback will that. I will tell what is the function of the optimizer. So, so some weight will be there. So what, are, what is the model? Just so I'm telling that why is it called? Uh, bx plus c something our model is equal to y is equal to 0.5x plus 5 something okay 0.5x plus c something your model is there 0.5x plus 4 something model is there so the weight is what is the weight that 0.4 into x is there now that's uh, 4 the multiplier so that is a coefficient that is called as a weight so the model is perfect performing well okay but in case of you are giving the apple image okay the input uh, is the apple but the model is predicting is a banana. So that then, so loss will be there. Yeah, yeah, model, you are predicting it is wrong. So some loss will be calculated. Loss will be calculated. Then this optimizer will take care of it. Okay. So initially the y is equal to, the model is y is equal to 0.4x plus something 5. 
no, no, I think 0.4 I kept here. So now I will change it to 0.5 or something 0.3. So that optimizer will take care of it. The person will means I can say as a person is a mathematical so math will be there. So that try to increase or decrease it. He will take care of it. And also some learning rate is there. So the learning rate also we will define in the code, code in the while training will define it in the code itself. So what should be the increment for each iteration? What should be the increment? With a 0 0.001 or 0 0.01. So something we try to give in the Python code. So the, these things will happen. Actually, this is a component of uh, any machine learning model to train it. Then I will try to the Python code. So I will explain. I will tell during that. So these, these are the component actually. <clears throat> so what is the bash size and epochs? Actually, <clears throat> well, let the research paper or everything, or if you read any research paper also. So they might have mentioned so bash size and epochs. Okay, you might have a uh, you might have a thousand images, okay? Maybe apple and banana, something. You might have a data set of thousand, maybe 500 images of banana and 500 images of apple, something you might have. Based upon the your system configurations, maybe all the thousand images will not be loaded at once into the RAM. We cannot load all the images at once into the RAM. So what we do is that we we'll try to uh, send a batch wises. Maybe uh, we generally take a batch 8, uh, 16, 32, 64, like that. 2 to the 4, even okay, uh, 8, 16, 32, uh, 64, 128, like that. We try to set maybe generally based on the RAM capacity. We'll try to maybe you kept as 8, you assume that bash size is 8. <clears throat> so, out of 1000 images, first 8 images will go to that uh, model, but maybe VG16, you assume that model is VG16. 8 images will go, we'll be try to trap means our uh, network, VG16 network will work on these images and try to extract the, some features. Then immediately we'll test on the validation data set. Actually, <clears throat> during the training, I mean, uh, while uh, building this model, we'll divide the data set into three three classes. I mean, three three. One is training data set, validation data set, and testing data set. So <clears throat> from the training data set, eight images will be taken. Your VGC network will work on this and immediately will try to uh, predict it. Yeah. When the, so I have tried it. So I'm testing in the validation data set. Is it okay or not? So like this. After next, after eight, at eight completed, then the remaining eight. Like that, like that. It's it will taken like this. Okay. That is a bash size. You can say the definition. You can see that bash size refers to the number of training examples fed into the model at once during the training. The training one by one, eight images, eight images like that. So what is the epochs? Thing is that. In the general way, even if we do, when if, if I come to any new organization, if I see any person at one time, maybe I know I don't remember his face. By seeing repeatedly, repeatedly his face, I can recall, yeah, he's something X, he's something Y. So repeatedly, if I see the same person multiple times, I can I can uh, when remind, I can, I can remember his face. So similar to that, so epochs also will generally will keep epochs so 100, 150, 200 based upon the complexity of the data set. So I will keep 100. Maybe I will keep epochs as 100. My batch size is, uh, the, I mean, sorry, uh, my image data set is uh, 1000. So if batch size is 100, means 100 times uh, 1000 images will be sent. First epochs, 1000 images will go. Second epochs, 1000 images will go. So like that, 100 times uh, your model will see your data set. And in the batch wise only, okay, in the batch wise only, but 100 images will go. Sorry, uh, 1000 images will go in each epoch. So if you keep the uh, epochs as a uh, 100, 100 means your model is going to see your data set uh, 100 times. So it will learn. So that will happen the learning pattern. So during the training process, during the training process, we have uh, uh, these graphs will be generated. Uh, one is uh, accuracy, especially this is a classification problem. Okay. This I'm talking about the classification problem. We will have these graphs <clears throat> and a class, I mean, uh, accuracy plot and error plot. Actually, this is the, uh, sorry, these both are only. Actually, I want to tell about the overfitting and underfitting. So what will happen is that, so you can see this blue one is a training, is a test. You can tell as a test or a validation set, both are same. I mean, not same. You can assume it's a test or, uh, I mean, testing data set or validation set. You see that for every epochs, actually we want increasing trend, okay? We, in every epoch, we want increasing trend. And uh, more another thing is that there should not be too much gap between the, uh, this uh, training and uh, testing the training process the testing process we should not want uh, more gap so that is we call the best fitting in case of underfitting or what will happen is that maybe you can see that the training 
our image, our model is learning so far is very good. It's learning about their data set. But during the testing process, it's unable to classify it. I mean, it's unable to perform the classification perfectly. So this thing, so the this thing, okay. So by seeing this one, actually I can say is the data means when machine learning engineer something, you are a doctor. So you must see these reports. So how the training process is happening. We must see these uh, graphs and we can understand that. So what may be the probable reason for this one? Maybe the image may be different. Maybe the, the training, we have the, some type of images. The testing may be different type of images. During the training, maybe the images are entered different. So what we need to do is that we need to, uh, what you call uh, a change, so some change, I mean, we merge them. We need to divide again, we need to divide that. So like that's something we need to do, some magic we need to do. So that again, we need to see, okay? There's a way we can go for the best, I mean, we'll get the best results. So what's the data augmentation? I think you might have heard of the data augmentation also. Uh, in case of data augmentation, in case of data augmentation problem, I mean, sorry, not our problem. So we want to collect the data set. We generally collect the data set. Maybe it's not possible to get the data. I mean, sorry. Uh, maybe you, you can see here a cat. Sir, so, sorry so for the interruption, maybe... sir. Upender, sir. So yes. You need yes, any sir. break? Yes, sir. You need any break, sir? Uh, sir, uh, I will complete in uh, five minutes, I think. We'll take a break. Okay, so you tell me, yes, sir. When, you tell me complete. when you need break, okay. Yeah, yeah. After five minutes, I will take break, sir, I think. Okay. Just okay. five minutes. 11, 10, I will take a break. Hmm. I will, at 11, 10, I will take a break. Hmm. I'm going to okay. So in case of data augmentation, so you see cat is look here. So cat may be different. Maybe do, what will happen is that maybe you take a cat images. Not I'm giving this example cat here, whatever may be data set you, you might have it. So maybe at one angle you may capture it. So maybe you try the model, but during the testing purpose or during the real world, maybe your maybe some tilting inclination will be there. Some maybe man, maybe something like this, something like this, some rotation will be there. So in order to overcome that, you try during the training itself, you try to capture the images at different angles. Maybe sometimes it is not possible to get the uh, different angles, but using image processing. You can do that. Crop it, tilt it. Okay. Some maybe increase the brightness of that image. We will decrease the brightness of it. Like that, we can do that. Okay. Such ways we can data augmentation. Data augmentation is nothing but increasing the data set size. Okay. So that is a helpful technique. That is a this important technique we can use for our data data set generation actually before go, going for the machine learning model um, de development. So one the next one is a balanced data set. So what is a balanced data set? So maybe I'm telling you about the two classes, binary classification in the machine learning. So if two classes are there, maybe banana and apple. So it's called as a two class, but you can generally call it a binary classification. If more than two, it's called as a multi-class classification problem. It generally calls multi-class, more than two, it's called a multi-class classification problem. If you have only two, that's called a binary classification. So what is a balanced data set? Even sometimes maybe I'm telling that banana and apple. So maybe you have a finite image of banana, maybe 400 something is the apple. Something, it's a little bit okay. But you have a finite images of banana and only 100 images of apple. So it will create a problem. So this is called a balance, this is called imbalance. So that, that thing we need to take care of it before going to the model, the model building. Because if you give the more data set about a particular class, so your model will train another particular class only. What are images you give, na, it will tell about that class only. So because it too much, I mean, so it's called, called overfitting. It too much learn about the particular class. So what are images you give that? It will try to predict like that only. Let's say if the banana images are more, it will tell you that if, even if you give the apple image, it will tell you banana. So like that will situation will be there. So we need to take care of it. So another thing is that one hard encoding and label encoding. Uh, so in case of visual learning, the, the uh, you see here, uh, we, have, we have the features here. So model will not take this. Uh, if you want to build the in the machine learning model building, so you see all the features are there, red, green, blue color features are there. So label apple, apple, banana is there. But during the model building, it, it will not it will not take like this. Okay. I mean the features we need to convert into one heart encoding. You can see here, I think label encoding, one heart encoding. Okay. Label encoding. It's called as uh, in one heart encoding. Yeah. It's a, it's a one card it's a one code encoding. So you see that in this one label, I have the how many? Sorry, is red. Yeah, sorry. This is I'm talking about this one. Color features because you see this all the features are integer numbers. Two twenty five, two twenty five. Like this, integer numbers are there. But whatever the color features, 
color features are red and yellow. So we cannot, uh, machine learning model cannot extract the strings. We must convert them into integers. So that is why instead of color features are added to extra features red and yellow because this particular column consists of the red and yellow. So red and yellow have taken. So what is one here? Because this particular row is belongs to the red. So this is red one, then yellow is zero. So that is called a one, one heart. One is heart, one is another cold, you think like that. So next one is red, also one. Then the next one, fourth one is yellow, okay? So in case of red, it is zero, yellow is one. So this called as a one heart encoding. So what on a label encoding? So in case of label also, the model does not take like this. So we need to convert them into, it's your wish. You can take apple as a one and banana as a two or apple as a uh, zero or your wish. We must convert them into integers. So these things we must know before building the model. So I will finish with here. So what is the performance matrix? So during the classic, during the building the model, so model building is over. Then you want to go in for the testing. So for, for generally, the, I'm telling you, I'm talking about the banana apple. So during the classic, four things will happen. Banana may be classified as a banana. Apple as a classified as an apple. So this is called the correct classification. That is called, you see, it's a true positive. Maybe you can think as an apple here, positive class. Apple is classified as apple. That is, is a fine. That is called as a true positive. Maybe banana is classified as a banana. Then very good. It's a true negative. Something it is over which whether positive or negative, model will take care of it. So true negative. But sometimes what will happen is that the banana may classify as an apple, apple may classify as a banana. So that will also happen. False classification, then it's a false negative, positive and false negative. So these things we must know because these things we will see in the research paper, especially this confusion matrix and uh, precision and recall, this F1 score. Uh, these things we must aware of it in order to uh, understand the risk papers. True positive, true negative, false positive, false negative, okay? Next one is, uh, this also graphs will be generated during the model training, is object detection models, okay? Uh, this you should aware of it uh, so that we can understand the, how the model training is happening. So what is the confidence of that particular model and the particular class, so okay? Okay, sir, we'll stop it, sir, here. Then after five minutes or 10 minutes break, we'll start again. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, dear participants, we will start the session again at uh, after 10 minutes. Okay. Sir, at what time? 1120? Uh, yes, sir. 1120 will join. Okay, 1120 will join. So select to spray that direction. So I'm going to tell about that. Then we'll move on to the coding session. Actually, how to try the model, just how to connect that. I will, I will, I will tell you. So actually, this is a CAD diagram that uh, uh, actually it's a small rickshaw type. I mean, four wheels, it consists of the spraying tank is mounted on the top of it, which has this uh, four wheels there. Uh, so we can see that uh, we have a motor, I mean, motors. I will tell you what the motor is. So the students, uh, they fabricated that and uh, we made a coding for that. Uh, actually, still it is under, under development. So they are going to attach the spraying part also. Actually, uh, this takes the inputs from, uh, actually Raspberry Pi is there inside that. Uh, when you give the commands from your key, um, keyboard, like you go for, I mean, like you, go, you press the buttons. W go for forward and uh, S is backward, A is uh, left and D is right. So like that, I will show that good uh, video demonstration. So if you come to that, so uh, we are using Raspberry Pi is there. Even you can use our laptop also. But thing is that 
you may not use maybe the maybe 30,000, 40,000 laptop. Why to use for that purpose? So we can use some we call as edge devices. So like uh, our Raspberry Pi, uh, ESP32 microcontrollers and uh, Jetson Nano, we can use this purpose, especially for edge device purpose and uh, for a field, field, field level application, we can use this Raspberry Pi as a microcontroller. So we are using a microcontroller that uh, Raspberry Pi 4B, 4, uh, in 4GB RAM model that we use for our purpose. So we know generally these are motor driver modules and uh, the solid and wall that are spraying that can uh, spraying that. Uh, so we know that uh, uh, actually, uh, if you, I think you might have a, uh, you might have worked with the Arduino. So there we don't have any OS operating system, but uh, uh, in case of Raspberry Pi, we have operating system that uh, Raspbian, actually Raspbian or, or you can also use Ubuntu uh, Linux system. You can deploy, I mean, you can use it as operating system. Uh, first, we need to download it, then we need to burn it, I mean, uh, flash into the our memory card. It will be 16 GB, 32 GB or 64 GB. Then the display will look like this. Mm. So what is the connection is there? Uh, so you can see that we have used uh, actually it's a webcam uh, to capture the images in the field. Actually, it's a site specific. I mean, it tried to capture the images. Uh, then uh, we have the Raspberry Pi uh, 4 here. So we need to power it for 5 volt. So we have used a power bank here. And also we use an HDMI display. So we want to for, for it also need charging, I mean, power. So we are providing with the help of the uh, power bank. Uh, then we need a battery for this power battery for uh, the, our uh, motor driver model. So why we need a motor driver model actually? So cannot, can't you connect the, the solenoid wall to this one? This we, can't, we cannot connect. And also one thing is that you know, because it, it draws a more current. So the, maybe Ras this Raspberry Pi will uh, uh, supply output volt uh, 5 volt only because it, it maybe some solenoid walls need 12 volts, some solenoid walls need 24 volt. So that power cannot be supplied by the Raspberry Pi. So that is why we as intermediate, so we'll use this a motor driver model. So there are several types of motor, motor motor drivers are there based upon the power consumption. I mean, the, how much power is taken care by the solid output devices, we will do that. We did a coding in the Python itself, Python coding. Uh, so simple in the flowchart, you can see that we capture the image, then just pre-processing, we will do that. Then we'll convert it to our BGR to lab color model. Why I'm converting to the lab color model? Because in the BGR color model, it is not possible to I me mean, actually this is a, actually in this case i didn't use any any machine learning just simple color based resulting only so i have I transformed the I change i converted the feature color format actually actually generally we'll talk about the rgb color model but uh, this open view python library will try to remember this a feature format so that is why i'm talking on I'm speaking as a bgr format bgr to lab so using in the lab color model i have taken only a channel so why are only a channel uh, l is the whiteness information will be there in the a channel green to red color information is there in the blue channel blue to yellow color information is there but my my ta my task is about i mean my in image green on the soil background will present so green green objects might uh, so more component is green green is a more major component soil also a little bit red in color so red component will be there so that is why i'm using the a channel for my purpose so we select the, some threshold value. If that satisfies the image, we, the image look like this. So that image green. So now we are, we are going to calculate this number of pixels. So maybe this image size is, you just say, assume that, uh, I think uh, the 640 into 480 something. So in the, the total number of pixels are 640 into 480. Out of 640 into 480 pixels, so how many pixels are that belongs to this region, this plant region we are calculating. That is the weed, uh, uh, weed cover is uh, I think weed cover is percentage. So that we are we are counting that according to the weed cover is percentage, we are going to trigger the nozzle. If the some because sometimes only small percentage of weed is there, some percentage more percentage of weed is there. So we can thing is that here it is a only solid wall. We cannot uh, point, I mean we can't uh, regulate the quantity of the chemical or water to be sprayed. We cannot regulate that. So that is why means we are small percentage is less than some greater than some, some five percent or something. Then only we spray, otherwise we don't spray. So if you have the, some proportional control walls, uh, they they can regulate the quantity. Maybe if uh, of a weed percent is five to twenty five percent is there, you apply this much uh, quantity of herbicide. If uh, more, uh, means twenty five to fifty percent is there, you apply this much. So quantity can be regulated using pulse width PMW signals. We can uh, quantify signal, but that a uh, proportional control wall. Cost is more, very based upon the discharge, 
discharge rate and pressure 35,000, 40,000 cost is there. So that is why we are just spreading. Actually, this is uh, similar. My PhD products are also on this one only. So we try to make it in our set of box, box so that we can easy to carry, easy to carry all the Raspberry Pi, power bank, everything we want in our box. So like this. So actually during my uh, period actually as assistant professor, uh, we try actually uh, for building, you know, instead of building the big setup, uh, so we try, we try to build the some with the plastic pipes that one. So you can see that the small uh, vehicle. So actually our goal is that if the plant is there, then spraying to be happen here. Our student is there. So here also you, know, you can see that I'm controlling here with the Wi-Fi on. I mean. Actually, in the, in the Raspberry Pi, we have the VNC viewer. So, uh, in my in my laptop, actually, uh, you have VNC viewer also installed in my laptop here. So, with the help of that, I'm controlling here. You can sell the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi, we are controlling that. So, front and back side, right or left, we can control that. So, there, uh, after that, we are, we are attaching the spraying unit. So, that is the, actually, we made a small setup. Next one, so this is the, our file setup. Here, we use this motor actually. We tried with the different motors. So you buy DC gear motor. Uh, so we faced a lot of issues with the motors actually. There's some, some. another thing is that some motors does not come with this sprocket. So we want a child drive system here uh, to our uh, wheel to the his motor. Uh, actually, we purchased different motors and we ex exchanged it because some motors comes with only shaft. They does not come with any uh, actually power transmitting unit like chain is there some gear so very difficult to mount so again we we shifted to this uh, e-bike dc gear dc gear motor so for this dc gear motor uh so this we need uh, some motor driver so riano so this motor actually is 6 volt to 30 volt real channel dc motor driver with for two channels because we have the two channels so we are con we are again we are controlling these dc motors with even our raspberry pi so we are used actually we are programmed there so just actually our student just yesterday he demonstrated just the front end side where yeah, it will go side to side also because in the field it has to take the turn so in that case what we will do that uh, we will give the more pmw signal to this wheel than this one so it's like a uh, what you call a differential wheel so it like act as a differential wheel okay so if you want to take the right turn left turn if I want to take the right right turn, then I will give the more PMW, more value to the left one so that I will give the less to the right one. So it will take the uh, right turn. So like this, we uh, we made a code by the code for that one. So actually, uh, actually, this is my 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 PhD work because the work is not finished, but I want to tell you that how it works. So our goal is that when the green thing, something is present, we need to spray the chemical. So Something you can see that when the green something color is found. Actually, we want to so this work uh, we need to optimize the distance between the camera and nozzle because thing is that uh, the spraying to be happen where where the plant region is formed. So and all, so that to be happened. So otherwise there is so no need of this, all the technology. So forward speed also will affect on this. Okay, the distance between the camera and the nozzle also will affect on this. And the camera field of view also will affect on it. So, so many factors will influence on that. So that is why I have gone during my PhD, I have gone for the some uh, for some experiment. So different uh, forward speeds, uh, camera height, and a different distance between the camera and nozzle. We have, I have gone for that. So that is important for the development of such, such systems. So another thing in the real time, uh, we are evaluated in the amount of that. So you can see that in the left hand side, you can see the soil. I mean, so, so we actual image, okay, virtual image. This one in the in the right hand side, you can see the segment. Our model actually we made that algorithm. We take the image and we try to see the uh, in the A channel tail and it apply the threshold value. If the particular threshold value satisfies, that pixel will become white, else is a black. Then also we will cal calculate the green percentage. You can see that here is a percentage of the green is there. It's nothing but wheel covers percentage. So we try to count how much, what is the percentage there. So based on this percentage, we are going to activate the solid one. Even you can see here, uh, spraying also. So we want to spray that uh, actually be the, for testing purpose generally on the empty soil, uh, we kept the plant leaves at a different interval. So we wanted to, see how it's happening because it's, it's an optimization process it is single glance it will not happen uh, so we try to test it we tested it 
field. So when there is no field, the chemicals, uh, chemical will be spray. Because actually, it's not a chemical, it's a water only. Just we want to see that what is how it's spraying happening, whether the nozzle is activating at the spot, and also where, when it is stopping. We want to know that. So we have conducted such experiment. Uh, so before going to the field level, so this is the way our system will work. Actually, even now our students are working, it works like that only. So we'll test in the cotton field actually. Uh, we test in the cotton field. Mm, then you can see that inside actually we mounted the our my VHD so the total work system with the back side of the tractor three three point is system. So inside that actually you see I already told you that uh, do do. If you want to work with the traditional image processing, uh, we need to control the factors like lighting conditions, uh, working height. So many things, many things we need to uh, we need to we need to look at it. So that is why uh, in the labs we optimized all the things and the camera thrown that we uh, covered with a black cloth so that at outside lighting condition will not have an effect on the color intensity. So if that change the threshold value, everything will be. I mean, a misclassification will happen. Uh, maybe soil pixels may classify as a plant pixels, uh, plant pixel may classify as soil pixels, something is a misclassification will happen. So in order to work on, if you want to work on that, we must uh, use this, I mean, uh, some factors. The, I mean, like a lot, we have, have protected cloth, we have used. So such things you have to take care of it. If you want to use a traditional image processing. So this one, so these up to our uh, theory part. So just uh, if you want to start with the Python programming, something you want to do that, just uh, I want to tell you. So in the Python programming, so actually if you want to work with images, generally uh, my total work is on image processing only. So if you want to load an image, any image if you want to load that, so what we need to do that? So generally in image processing, we will use a, uh, Actually, there is a, some trouble with this Jupyter Notebook uh, OpenCV Python library. So I'm using VS Code. So you can see that I'm using, I think you know, different Python IDs. Actually, you see this Anaconda Navigator I have opened here. So it has a different Python IDs are there. We can use that, like PyCharm, uh, Jupyter Notebook, and uh, VS Code, I think VS Code. So different Python IDs are there. We can use them. And also, uh, one, th one most important thing we should know uh, actually, these here are created different environments. We call as a feature board. Actually, for a different uh, project, I have created different Python IDs. Why I'm uh, why I have created? Because uh, the the thing is that you might have working with a different projects. Maybe project one, maybe have want uh, Python is Python version three point eight. Maybe some other some different uh, other project may requires three point ten. So because if you install the both the uh, I mean if if you you use the only single environment, okay, you work with the 3.9, Python 3.9, your work is finished. Then we want the different project. Again, you install the uh, different Python version 3.10. Then this overwritten, is overwritten this one. Then you, if you want to go back and work with that project, you cannot work. So that things will happen. So that is why uh, we try to create the different, what we call as a virtual environment. So in the even you can use the Anacona Navigator or you can use the VS Code, whatever may be, ID you can use and you can create the virtual environment. You can give whatever name you want to give, you can give and you can select the Python uh, version. So this is the way you can do that. Even uh, even numerical Python or Pandas or TensorFlow, whatever the version you want to use it, you can, version, you can use it for different projects. So that is the best advantage. Actually, we should know. Otherwise, there's a conflict will happen. So, if you want to work with the images, so uh, now there is, I'm working with the, on the present I'm working with the, um, this uh, VS Code. So actually we know when you are importing libraries, like so operating OS is operating system, CV2 is the computer vision, NumPy, okay? Again, I think OS is there again, I think double tap. I think so the important time. So if you want to load the image, you see that I have one image that is a banana, Image is found in a one folder, the desktop data set, uh, data set 01 banana. So this image is found okay? in the desktop. So now I want to load this image. So what you will do generally, you will go here, maybe somewhere in the folder, we will go that, maybe we will try to copy this one, like that if you copy this one. When you copy this folder, we have a single slash, okay? We have a single slash, but uh, uh, while define this path, we need to provide the double slash. Please remember, if you want to work with this image data set, image, whatever it may be, 
not only image if you want to load the any uh, document pdf uh, or some excel some csv if you want to load that so these things were and also extension because the image may be the jpg format or pmp uh, pn pnp or pmb or pnp format or bmp format jpeg format I mean, different image formats are there so that format we must know that we must define here otherwise it does not know i mean it told that no no image is found with this name it will simply give an error other way of defining is that okay maybe you don't want to keep the double slash here or else you can copy the same path and keep r just to keep r here in front so we can by you can keep the double slash here or all or else we can keep the r so everything is same so this is two ways we can load the file we can load the image so if you want see you see that i am loaded the uh, import cv2 so i'm using cv2 computer vision cv2 is the computer vision library i'm using if you want to read that okay i have provided a path here okay i have provided a path here then so uh, the path, same path i'm giving here cv2 i am read so this is the function uh, it will take the one argument is path then i'm using so because i read the image then i want to display it because i want to see whether the image is loaded correctly or not so cv2 i am sure this function takes the two arguments okay this function takes the two arguments this is the first argument is a name window name whether what whether it is maybe it's a banana image you can keep it as a banana you can write in the double quotes or single quote you can write as a banana so no issue it's a abbreviation but in second argument is this variable name here we are defined as image so you must use this image otherwise it will throw an error then if you want to display image this supporting to the I mean two what do you call two lines of python code you compulsory you have to use okay you want to display image how much time you want to display it so that you have to write so that is weight key cv2 weight key is used for that purpose and okay once you have used this one you want to destroy it so for that purpose you use this cv2 destroy key so what is this number it is the two seconds okay two thousand milliseconds this is, if i run this So the image is displayed. It will stay for the two seconds. It will go. Okay. Or else, okay, it, it won't stay unless you press any button from your keyboard. So at that time, you have to keep the zero here. So you keep the zero and you run this. It will, it will stay. It will stay only. Then you have to keep the cursor on the image and you press something. It will go. Any 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 button from the keyboard, you press that. It will go. So this is the one way of uh, loading an image. Then... If you want this Python code, we can view even in the YouTube also available. If you want, we can share with these uh, coordinators. Uh, next one is for display also there. So thing is that uh, how to select the optimal threshold value. So in the previous one, actually we have been working with. Uh, I'm telling that uh, if there's something intensity value greater than 120, 140, this is the foreground, is the background. So this code actually is available on the YouTube. So I little bit modified this one. So this code, no need to worry about this. Just we have to provide the path to that image, which image you want to remove the background or for something you want to do that image crossing. First, you have to provide that path. Only you have to do that thing only. Remaining and nestly, which color model you want to use it. So if you come here, I think, uh, uh, yeah, here. So I will tell you this Python code also here. I'm loading image in RGB color format. I want to convert into lab color model. Okay. I want to color into lab color model. In the lab color model, I want to apply threshold value. So if you run this, it will give the four. Okay. Here, so this first is the lab L, L minimum, L maximum, A minimum, A maximum, B minimum, B maximum. Now you try to segment, remove this. So if I increase the value, so A value I'm increasing, you see. So what is that? So it is actually my interest is that when I change this cursor, so my fruit region, because this is this information I want, this fruit region want in a white background, remaining remaining should be black. So as I already told you that mm, this A channel will consist of green and red color informations. So I will keep A value zero and uh, this A value I will try to reduce it. Maximum value will try to reduce it. So you see that. So uh, it is changing like this. Now we can see these values. So remain all are same. Just I change the A value is one to three. So maybe this is the have done for a single image. Then you have to do for the some multiple number of images. Then we need to find out some one optimum for this for traditional image processing. So in the machine learning, you don't need to worry about this for threshold values. 
model will automatically will learn it. But if you want to use traditional image processing and if you want to like this classification approach, if you want to use this, so this is the best. Actually, uh, initially, uh, thing is that we can try with the different threshold values. Initially, I will keep 20, 30, 40. From the trial and error, we can do that, but it is a time too much time taking. But if you have such a graphical user interface, and by changing this one threshold values, means you can see here. So what is happening if I change the threshold values? So you can adjust it, we can finalize it. So now I'm pressing escape. So it will go. This is the graphical user interface we can use for, for your purpose if you want to use that. Next one is loading. Okay. Next one, next code is that okay. Uh, if you want to work with the multiple images. If you want to work with the multiple images, okay. If you want to work with the multiple images, um, so maybe I don't want to explain too much thing, but for that purpose, we will use this OS list directory. Okay, now if you want, I will share the, all the codes. I mean, all the codes with you. So this is this Python code will help us actually total. Actually, I try to, I try, I try to uh, uh, I mean uh, save the their image name and image. So OS dot operating system dot list directory. This Python code will help us to load the maybe you your folder might have 10 images or 20 images are there you want to you don't want you don't want single image you want all the images to be loaded at once so for that purpose this python code will help if you type in the chart it will give you a list directory this list directory is helpful for that so okay i will cover main main things only i think uh, so this is okay next one is that we okay so this is more i think you were, if you want to work with the web cameras, maybe you want to collect the data set, maybe uh, you may be scientist or you want to work somewhere, you want to work your project. I mean, you want to collect the data set and you, okay, you want to collect the web camera or your, 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 your uh, default camera. So even I have the web camera with me. So this Python code will, I'm using OpenCV Python only uh, library. So in, again, I'm import CV2. So this more, I'm, I'm defining one object to function here. Uh, CV2 video capture, zero is index. If I keep zero, it has taken default, uh, default on my cam, default laptop camera. If I keep one, it take the, my, my laggy camera. I mean, some regular camera. So this is just, okay, cap I have defined here. So again, I'm using while loop. So it's continuously, it will run unless until I press Q button here. So this, uh, this line, the two lines of Python code will help us. Okay, you don't want to continue this. You want to stop this program in between something. So if you press the Q button, why Q? Because I defined your queue. If something I entered from the keyboard, then it will be stopped. The program is automatically will stop. So that is the thing. Uh, okay, I will run this one. You can see me. I think uh, uh, feed is already coming. Uh, it may be trouble. Just wait. I'm stopping uh, my my feed. Otherwise, it will be in trouble. So I'm running this. You can see on the scanner. Okay. Uh, now you can see here. Uh, now our camera feed is coming. So this is the way we can see this. So now this is my built-in camera. I'm pressing the Q button. So it will, it will disappear. So if you want, if you want my web camera, if you want to use our web camera, if you want to use a web camera, I'm connecting my web camera to my laptop. So just, I will change here. I will change it zero to one. Zero to one. So then I will run it. Just only we don't change index only. So you can see that uh, I am able to connect to the my web camera. So this is the way just we can change this so index and the work on that. This way again I am pressing the Q. So this is the way we can work this. Okay, if you want to take the multiple camera feeds, maybe sometimes maybe uh, in the surveillance camera sometimes you want to multiple camera feeds. So I'm not run, going to not run this code. So for the, actually I have tried to use OpenCV Python only, but it's not working well. For that purpose, I'm using threading. So this Python library will help us because in our, in our, in our system now in the, in the yard, we are going to use this one. We, because we take the so many uh, 10 cameras, 20, 20 cameras, we are going to operate it with, with the help of CO2, it's not possible. So threading with the help of this one, I can, I can take the uh, multiple camera field. So we can use this library. If you want to work with the multiple cameras, you can see that. So even you can change the image resolutions. So how to change? Maybe uh, 
you want to change the camera image resolutions. So just uh, this function will help us. Uh, cap dot set, okay? Because why cap? Because I defined this variable name as cap. That is why cap. Cap dot set CV2. Uh, cap is a frame width, as height width. So this is when we can change this one. Uh, I mean, you can set the uh, whatever the image resolution. But thing is that we should know what is the camera resolution that is supported by your camera. Something you can't. Uh, it's not a random one. First, we need to see how many camera resolutions because one camera may support different image resolutions. We need to see them. Then we can mention here. So the, this is the way you can say. So main thing is that thing is that uh, generally, okay, you capture the images. Okay, you capture the images and you want to save them. How to save it? Okay, here it is there. So this CV2 I'm sure function will help us to display an image. So if you want to save them, there is CV2. I am right. So CV2 I'm right function will help us uh, to save the image. Okay. If you want this Python code also, I will give you. So now I will go to the training. Okay. We will go to the uh, first of all image classification problem. We'll go to that. So different codes are there. If anyone interested, you can in the chart. You can mention that. I can share you. Uh, many things are there. Main thing is that I want to go to the um, yeah. So actually, deep learning approach, I want to tell main thing. Actually, during the theory, I told you about the deep learning, that is a max pooling. I mean, uh, number of convolution filters are there. Uh, pooling is there, striding is there. So a real actuation function is there. If you want to use the, even I told you about VG16. So that is pre-trained model. If you want your own, own network. So for that purpose, we generally use the TensorFlow. It's, a, uh, it's a developed by the Google. Uh, this Python library, we generally use it. And uh, another library also there, there's a PyTorch that is developed by the Microsoft. We will use them for our model training. So this is the TensorFlow Keras actually is a backend is TensorFlow. So where is the Keras? So sequential, sequential means here we are, uh, we are stacking, okay? We are using the convolution operations, we are using max pooling. So everything we are using. So what, what, what I mean to say is that, so this is one convolution layer, okay? But this is second convolution layer. This is a third convolution. So this is the convolution layers. I'm constructing using Python code, using a special TensorFlow library. So it, it knows already functionality. If I use 32 means 32 filters, because during the theory, I already told you that I do not know how many filters I need to use my project. I do not know. And how many convolution layers I need to use, I do, I do not know. So that is why just, uh, I'm keeping initially also, when I'm talking about the VG16, initially they used 124, I mean, filters 64, 124, I mean, uh, 220, something, they're increasing. So like that, we can also increase and filter size three by three. So this is the way we can also construct uh, one custom. We can, it's called custom CNN. Uh, convolution unit, custom CNN, we can call it as a custom CNN. So then activation function is ReLU. So this ReLU activation function is called non-linear activation functions. So the thing is that uh, while working with the, the, you see, in case of these Im images, the intensity values are 0 to 255. Because thing is that while before sending these images into the network, we try to normalize these values 0 to 1. So the values may be 0 to 1, many range will be there. But so that time the weight or something to create a trouble. So ReLU activation function will try to keep between, I think, 0 to 1 or minus 1 to 1. Like that, try to uh, shrink the range. So that is the need of the activation function here. Uh, then you see, this is a Actually, you saw, I already told you the flattening operation. In the theory classes, I told, in the theory slides also, I told the flattening means uh, the scale. I mean, uh, the image is square. It is flatten. It may, be, it may it make a single column or a single row. It make it that. Then, again, we are using the tense layer. Is it, this, is, this is a part of the ANN, artificial mm -hmm. network, ANN, classification layer. This part is the ANN layer. So here, you see that, again, 64 means uh, this is a one Dense layer. If you again you copy and paste, this is a another dense layer. There are the another dense layer. So like this, we can increase or decrease the uh, dense layers and also this uh, uh, dense neurons. This is a dense neurons are there. 64 bits. It's also an hyperparameter. We do not know how many to use. Next one is the uh, here. Final is the this is a very important. The final layer is also an activation function, sir. It, uh, we, we do not use the ReLU in the final output layer. In activation, we can use the softmax. Is softmax for the multi-class classification problem? Uh, sorry, uh, for a binary classification, we use the sigmoid. So we must know this one. 
this values this activation function will give the probability so if you have the four classes if you send up a banana image so what is the probability of this image being a banana so 0. 0.7 something what is the probability of the image belonging is a uh, uh, so orange so like this the probability value will give will give the soft max or uh, uh, sigma it will give so you must know uh, before training the model we must know this then optimizers already told you that uh, some optimizers are there so what is the role of the optimizer try to ch change the update the weights so that is the auto optimizer difference are there they even this loss function also there this loss function also depends upon the um, problem it's a binary so if it's a binary classification problem binary class entropy is there it is a multi-class classification problem sparse categorical class entropy so different types of there maybe different uh, based on the problem also maybe vg16 will take one type of uh, this uh, loss function so based on that we need to see very good documentation is there so because so this is a this is called a custom CNN. So if you want to go further, um, actually, I told you pre-trained models. I already told you pre-trained models. So, so what I'm telling is that maybe you are the researcher, you want to build a one uh, model. So binary classification or multi-class classification problem, you want to build that. So now how to build that? Now I'm using, I'm not using CNN, I mean custom CNN. I'm all I'm, I'm going to use some pre-trained models because they already know that how to detect the uh, shapes, how to detect the edges. So they know, they already know because they these models have been trained on the image and data set of millions of data set. And uh, these models of the thousand classes like that is there. So they already know how to detect the edges. So that weights, that memory, I'm, I'm taking as an initial, initial weights, then I'm going to start. So, so first thing what we need to do is that uh, maybe my images. So, so in order to build this uh, image classification model, so what we have to do is that. Uh, so, what first of all we need to create one folder. Whatever folder we have to create, you can create the one from folder. So, we have to create the folder. Within the folder, we have to create the number of classes. So, maybe uh, it is a banana. So, it is a label name. We call a banana. Next, next one is it is called it's considered the apple. Apple. So, sorry, like that we have to create it. You have to create it and you have to dump all your images into these folders. So maybe binary classification, multi-class, you have to dump all these images into these folders. From this folder, we try to load all images. So I'm doing same similar here. So I want to load the all the images in this data set. I also want to label. Okay. What is the label of that image? What is the label of that image? What is the label of that image? What is the label? I'm telling here now. So this label is the banana for this folder. Uh, for this one, Apple is the uh, label for this. So that also I want to load because my model should know because it's a supervised machine learning. I already told you during the second slide, I think, of the supervised machine learning, I will provide the data set. Along with that, I will also provide the labels for that data set. So under what is size? Because uh, this model, pre-trained models will take uh, when uh, Actually, that model is trained on an image of 224 by 224. So that is the purpose. I'm again, my, my data set also, I'm resizing into 224. Means 224 by rows and 224 by columns. So this in the data set, all that images will be stored in the label, whether, okay, I loaded this first image, whether it is apple or banana. Second image is apple or banana. So that will be stored here. Next, I need to uh, use this all the that means I need this. Uh, I need I need this all the libraries help. Okay, because before that I already installed all this. So if you want to before install, we must install this all the libraries like TensorFlow, uh, CV2, NumPy. We need to install pip install OpenCV, country Python, pip install TensorFlow like that. We need to install. Then only it will work. Otherwise, tell that no module found CV2, no module found TensorFlow. It will tell you that. So we need to okay. Uh, this are under. Then here, this line of code will help us to. Uh, load the, all the images that is present in the, that folders. Okay, so this is the you see I already told you that if you want to load the multiple directory, okay, in this for in this folder, uh, in this folder, okay, very big name. In this, uh, images are found. What are healthy? Okay, so now, now my problem is a binary classification problem. So in this folder, healthy images are there. Okay, I'm loading all the healthy images and. Uh, because I'm giving some condition here. If I load a particular image under the maybe image dot jpg, first image image 01 dot jpg, image 02 dot jpg, like that extension is there. 
maybe sometimes uh, in that folder maybe you might have word documents you might have pdf so it will create trouble because that image that that file also will loaded into this uh, data set so that is why i want the uh, data set uh, that uh, that uh, extension is jpg then only you load it otherwise you will skip it so like that i'm loading that image and uh, I'm, I'm because the, our model the image should be in the array format i'm loading it then i'm resizing it i'm converting it to np data you see in the python if you know about the basics of python we call a list we call them as a list okay single single image i will take it i will append it so one image uh, next second image i will append it i'm storing in the list format okay and the list so, so like this i'm running this folder i'm sorry this cell it is running you can see that this kernel is telling that it's busy okay because it is it's running all the cells are it is running it's loading all the images okay it's running all the images it's loading it loading into that and you can see that because uh, i told you already uh, label encoding so instead of keeping here is a healthy i'm directly i'm keeping is zero even you can keep is here is healthy after that, you can do the label encoding so that the healthy become one or a zero and then they become one. So we can do that later also. But why to why to again you do that operation? Directly you can keep zero. If something image belongs to zero, uh, sorry, image belongs to healthy, you keep zero, or uh, otherwise it is unhealthy. And if you're unhealthy, you keep one. So like that, we can do that. So now I think it's running. And it is running that cell. Then I'm loading unhealthy images. So these are unhealthy images. We need to take that unhealthy. So we can, again, I think it's taking time. So we can load this unhealthy. After loading this one, actually I already run this. Okay. Uh -huh. So then we need to go, I think taking time, I will go. So after that, again, we need to convert into NP because the data set in the list, because our, uh, this library does not work on the list. This is, I mean, especially um, this uh, convolution operations. Uh, the either should be convert into list. So again, I need to convert into list. Oh, sorry, numpy array. So you can see the data set. So what is number is indicating here? This number is you see if the 367 is total number of images. Each image size is 224 by 224, and that is the color image. It means three channels. Okay, these things you should know. I think you might have known. Uh, 367 is the number of images. 224 by into 224 into three. Then labels also should be same. Because number of images should be data set size should be equal to the label. So 367. So both are same. Okay, no issue now. And then I think it's loading. Um, it's loading. Okay. So what is the label? You see that it's a label. If I print the label, it is giving the zero or one. What is the zero? Because zero is the I think unhealthy. I think first one is unhealthy or healthy. I think uh, first one is healthy. Yes. First one healthy. So zero means healthy. One means unhealthy. So then I think it's running, so I don't want to run now. I, okay, so I think you might have heard about this one. Uh, you, I think in the, I think I saw that in the previous videos. Uh, so you already know about splitting. You want to uh, split the data set to training and testing. You can split this data set using this one. Yeah, again, okay. Now then, because this this is called as a uh, we can call we can call it as a normalization. I have told you that. The, it is a 8-bit image. So each pixel intensity values will vary from 0 to 255. So I want to normalize, I want to bring them all the values into 0 to 1. So that is why this, this cell will be, this Python code will help us. Next one is that, uh, so the, you see, uh, this is a white train because these values are there in the white train or white test in the Y, all the ground truth information is there, whether the, whether the, pix, whether the image is uh, healthy or unhealthy. So for that purpose, I need a particular column only. So that is why when I make it a reshape, one column, so, so many rows. So that this will be, if you don't run this one, it will throw an error. You see here, I'm using efficient at V0. It is a one pre-trained model I'm using for my purpose. So you see, what will, what is the convolution 2D? So in the, I think while I was discussing with the uh, deep learning, actually convolution operations, so dot wise multiplication, filter into image. So this, will, this function will help us. So if you run this one, that mathematical operation will happen. So convolution 2D, max pooling, batch normalization, activation function, dropout. So this is a, this, is a, this term is used for the, to reduce the overfitting, underfitting, flatten. So these things will help us. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you run this Python code flatten, it will make the square into one single, single row or column, it will make it there. 
then I'm using efficient and peaceful pre-trained model. So here, if I run this cell, I think I can run this. Yeah, we can run this. Now I think it's dividing in a data set training and testing. Then uh, normalization. This thing. So here, so this is one important thing. I'm using efficient net V0. Their um, architecture I'm using along with their weights also I'm using because this actually if you type in the Google, there is an image net data, data set. Image net data set. I think it's a million of data set is there. And I think it has a thousand classes. I think of bat, bat ball, elephants, animals, so, so many things, chairs. It will so that uh, the data set is there. On the data set, all the models, all the need new machine learning models come into the market. They will test mainly on that data set, then they will they will explore, they will report they'll report their accuracy. So this image net, uh, this model is trying to this image net data set and that weights, that brain memory I'm taking my purpose. I'm telling that include is equal to R. So what is the meaning of this is that I don't want the classification layer because this model uh, as uh, it, it, this model has a provision to classify the one image into thousand classes. But my problem is on a binary classification. So I don't want is classification layer. Um, it's called a top. Top is called for me so that uh, a network will be removed from the, the feature extraction stage. Then uh, input input is 224 by 24 into 3. So this is there. So then what I'm uh, next is that you see here that for layer efficient B0, this what is the meaning of this one is that so I put a true if you can get a pass. What is that? Their weights are I'm taking their weights. Is a feature extraction weights I'm taking. Whether you want to update their weights or not, other whether I want to use same weights. Same weight, do you want to change their weights? And the, the filter we have the elements minus one, zero, one, like the elements will be there. Do you want to update their weights files or you want to save? Because if so, whether which one is best? Maybe uh, in the say, thousand classes, if your class is present, maybe I want to go for the orange classification. In the thousand classes, orange class already there, then we need, you no need to go for the again retraining this one. If your class is not present, so your model now this architecture does not know about your data set, so you must put a false. So again, the weights will be updated. So this will be total network. If you see see this one, uh, this is a bunch of uh, convolution layers, so max pooling, many many things will be there. It's a pre-trained model. So here you see that. Here I'm constructing a, a CN, I mean A classification layer. Here because I put a false here, okay? I put a false here because I don't want the top. I don't want the classification layer. I put as a false here. Now, now I am constructing my own. I'm constructing my own classification layer here. I'm flattening after flattening operation. Okay, how many tens layer you want? Uh, in the in the each test layer, how many uh, how many tens neurons you want? Sixty four. And a dropout means maybe twenty percent of the neurons you want to. Uh, what you call it, you got to sleep it. it means you, you don't want to fight that neurons maybe you try to uh, reduce the overfitting okay i think if you try to reduce overfitting and second second dense layer and a dense neuron so like that you see in the locks layer my my problem is a binary classification problem so that is why i use it as a one okay i must be so don't keep two why means i don't i, don't, I also don't know so binary classification problem they try to keep one in the <clears throat> more than two Three means three classes, four means four classes, they will keep it. In case of binary classification problem only, they will keep one. So in the activation function, the activation function is sigmoid because it is a uh, binary classification, use a sigmoid. If it is a multi-class classification problem, we will use sigmoid, sorry, softmax is activation function. So then you can see this model. Now, so we see that it is a binary classification problem. I'm using binary class entropy as a loss function. Uh, is a optimizer we can use a Adam as a one optimizer is available and a SGD stochastic gradient descent is a one optimizer we can use that then learning rate I already told you that after every epoch what should take the increment so that you and uh, zero point uh, triple zero one so even you can change this metric is accuracy so this is some pre processing we need to do that you can see this is very important so we are taking uh, extreme pre processor because why I'm done why I have done this that. Because I'm using someone else's uh, uh, model uh, as a pre-trained model. Actually, they did some pre-processing. Actually, before sending uh, our image into their network, they did some uh, pre-processing input. So maybe, I don't know, 
we do not know what actually they did, but they gave the one module in the TensorFlow Keras application efficient net. In that they, they have the in, in their model only we have the pre-processing one values there. With the help of this model, we can pre-process the input. Then we can send our extract and extract images into that. Uh, so okay, we have the pre-process our images. Now we are coming into the actual processing. I mean actual training. So I already told you bash size is equal to eight. Means every time eight images will go into the network and it will try to produce this accuracy loss plots. So then where post is equal to means so that it, this will be printed out. We see ebooks for the I mean, for our demonstration purpose. I keep ebooks is equal to five because our now. Our images are the 336 something images are there. Five times it will go. Epochs 5 means first time. Uh, Epochs 5, 5 means so five times. That's uh, 336 means we will, will move, go and come. So this is a back propagation will happen. So five times will happen. If I run this one, so you can see. <clears throat> so Epochs equal to 5. Is there, now it's running. You can see that the kernel is busy. means it is running. So during this one is busy. We should not disturb this network. So we should not run another, another cell. So because it is running, so we need to wait. <clears throat> so after that, uh, this code will uh, actually uh, already run this one one time yesterday night. So it will make the uh, two plots. I think we started to see loss and accuracy. It will give the two loss. I mean two loss into uh, training accuracy and loss. It will give you see this accuracy for the training accuracy, training loss, validation loss, validation. Loss. Both things will give as I told, as I told you know. Do the, so you will divide during the deep learning, the, we divide the data set into training, validation, testing. So testing will not help full anything in the training process. Do the training process, it will take the eight images from the training data set. And also it takes, I think, eight images from the testing, sorry, validation. Okay, I train, I have gone to one epochs and I learned something, I'm going to predict it on the validation data set. So what is my accuracy? Or what is my uh, training accuracy and validation accuracy? Training loss and validation, validation. So that things will be there. Then that will come. After that, we can print this one. So like this will come because our trend only for the five folks. It uh, don't learn anything. So uh, this is the error. Actually, this is an error or loss plot. You can see that. So what should the good trend is that uh, for each epoch, okay? For actually train uh, in case of accuracy plot, the accuracy initially will be zero. We try to start increasing. Okay. In case of loss. Uh, so initially the loss will be the highest we try to decreasing trend. So that is the trend will be there. We need to see uh, how it happens. Okay. Mm. Then I'm also testing it on the our testing data set because uh, we train the model. We want to test it on the unseen data set. Okay. That is a testing data set or a hold on data set also. We can call it a hold on data set. We can test it that. So I think uh, it's printed all. You see. Uh, I think you can see that these all are probability values. Okay. These all are because I use the sigmoid activation function. These all are the uh, uh, probability values. Okay. This is the first image. What is the probability of first image becoming healthier and healthier? I think healthier and healthy. So, like this is the probability values. So, then this is the first image. What is the first image? What is the probability of is becoming healthy? Uh, second name, what is the probability of becoming healthy? So, like that, like that, it is there. Now we have to fix a one threshold value here. Now we have to fix a one threshold value here. Yeah. So you see, these all are stored in the result variable. In the result variable, if the my threshold maybe probability value is more than 0.5, you make it as a one or zero, something like that. I'm making it. So I'm running this. Okay. So it is classified as zero or one. So uh, so this one is a, so you know that now I think one is a unhealthy, I think zero is a healthy. So like that now model gave this. So you can print the whitest because this is the actual one. Okay. Whitest means this is the actual ground truth image because I know that uh, this first image is a um, unhealthy. So what my model predicted, okay, unhealthy only. And this is the right prediction. So in the in the in the, in the, in the data set, the second uh, second image belongs to the I think healthy, but you see it's predicted as a one means unhealthy. So this is a misclassification happened. So here we'll print the confusion matrix. So this confusion matrix will help us the training process. So precision, that is why we should know. Uh, uh, that is why we should we should learn about what is a precision, what is a recall, what is a fun score. So we should learn. Then only we'll understand what is happening uh, with the, inside that. Then okay, you maybe you got the very good. Maybe if you're trained for the hundred epochs or two hundred epochs. 
uh, then your your result is good accuracy loss plot is also good and operation recall values also good then you can save this this memory okay you can re we can save this memory like uh, this is called a wait file okay this file a wait file you see we have trained our model using the someone else uh, memory okay so is a wait file okay this is a wait file we are trained this model uses someone else memory and we have now we are trained on our own data set and we have one memory now so this memory we will store it we will save this wait file and in the next time in the future we want to deploy it in the production level somewhere else we will use this wait file in instead of this wait file we will use this wait file okay this wait file we will use this and we will go we can go for the testing purpose instead of your image net wait file we will use our own wait file and we can go for the uh, testing purpose production level so this is the uh, this is called a classification problem we will do this so then i think in a, again in 10 minutes i will go for the one is the next one is the object detection problem because if you see in my ppt all are object detection problems mainly so how to try that so just to wait i will show that how to try the object detection problems so i'm going to use google collab because uh, i already tried that so i can easy to use so even and even if you want this code will send because i, I use yolo v7 uh very deep okay so for the actually i will show you one i think you might you know i don't know whether you robo flow so please explore this robo flow uh so i can call software is a tool i can call as a tool excellent tool especially for this computer vision so this tool uh, very helpful for you you see i'm logging into this robo flow the software in order to especially work with the um object detection problem and image segmentation or pose estimation you must know this uh, tool okay because why why do you want this one you see in case of um, you see i will well, i will create one so i will create one new project you see that how to create maybe i am going for the binary classification something either you are wish maybe i am keeping fdp the project name is fdp maybe you want to identify the person something you want to identify the persons persons in this so you see that that is why I, I, earlier i told you so what is your problem which uh, whether it comes to the object detection classification instance segmentation or key point detection and semantic segmentation whether which whether which whether it means your problem comes under which one which category so maybe object detection classification you see that in the one uh, classification only orange is present another is different so like this so in some segment so first mine in this case i'm going for the object detection so you select the object detection i select the object detection then i think uh, the downside will be there okay create the public project some create your project after creating this project it will ask you to upload the images okay it will ask you uh, to upload the images it will ask you to upload the images we need to drag and drop all the images then <clears throat> after drag and drop images we need to annotate it so i already having my images i will go back so this is the way you can create it mm. yeah db so pp kit yeah i will see this pp kit so we have been working in this project okay uh, you can see that this data set okay we have this data set if i open this data set <clears throat> so this is called annotations in case of object detection problem first thing is that we load we need to load the all images all images into the software because there are several, several software several and we call annotation tool, tools are available but this is the best tool i can say by my experience <clears throat> so you are working with the object detection problem okay for that purpose we have to first to annotate it where the element is present where the best is present where the present is present <clears throat> first we need to annotate it we need to draw the bounding boxes okay uh, using this uh, okay this bounding box tool if your problem is if you, means uh, this is a object detection problem okay you can see i think somewhere to mention object detection okay this object detection problem is a classes boots gloves actual helmet mask so different class are there okay or vest these are the classes we have annotated it using this software if your problem is segmentation problem so then we have to use a polygon so polygon to be used for the semantic segmentation okay that you need to uh, you must know that 
So like that, we need to do the annotations. After doing all annotations, <clears throat> so you did annotations. After doing annotations, we will go to the health checkup or generate. So here, you see that after doing this one, so here you see source all the images are six hundred images are there total eight classes are there like uh, person uh, helmet vest the glass boots all 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 classes are there means all images are annotated so zero means all images are annotated no images unannotated so it is zero then <clears throat> you see that I have the software itself it will divide the data set into training validation testing it's your wish so how many images you want to allocate it for each category we can if you want to rebalance you can do the rebalance we can adjust here. We can adjust here, so no issue. You can do that. This is using this one excellent. You can do that. Then after this one, so continue do that. After continuing this one, so whether you want to resize it or if you want to some pre-processing. So what is the pre-processing? Maybe you want to add something. Uh, you see here, what you call grayscale. You want to adjust the brightness or you want to crop any images. Something it is. It is a one, one step of data augmentation technique. If you want to add something, you can add this. If you don't want, you can don't add it. So another thing is the data augmentation. So here, I already told you about data augmentation. You, you come to data augmentation. You come to data augmentation. You can see here, we can rotate an image in the, in the data the data augmentation slide. I told you that the cat image are trying to rotate it. You flip it, 90 degree rotate, crop it, rotation, share it, increase the brightness, increase you, whatever thing you want to do it, you can do it. So that you can increase the data set size. Okay. These things also happen with their so with the help of this tool. After this, so you will have, we'll have the total create the data set to 15. See, initially I have only 600 images. I input a 600 images. But after this, applying this data augmentation, I made into 1530 images. So then you go to create it. The, the create will be the it will create the new data set. Now, even <clears throat> when you have when you create a new account in this RoboFlow, they will give you three, I mean, what do you call that? Three times you can train your model in this. So they will give you the performance metrics of the your model is trained, they will give us. If you if you want to train more than three times, then we cannot train the model here. So for that purpose, we need to import it. So that is why I'm using my Google Colab. So this is YOLO V7, okay? The YOLO V7 uh, model I'm using. Now even now you have for YOLO 10 also came into the market. So what we need to do? So it is generating, just wait. It is creating a data set. I think we no need to wait. We already created it, okay? Same thing will happen here. We need to export the data set, okay? So the two things will be there. So what is your model type? What is your model type? You should know. So each model accept different formats actually. Each model accept the different image formats. I mean, that of uh, actually when you draw the co co I mean bounding box, you try to remember the coordinates of that particular. So whether it's a YOLO V V5 or YOLO V7, YOLO V8, what is the model you are using? So that you must have specified. Okay, mine is YOLO V7. I'm YOLO V7 by touch. So so you you can download the uh, direct zip all the file, all the images in the zip will be downloaded into your work, your laptop. Yes, I want to uh, know, then you can import into your, uh, your Google Drive. But I don't want to do that. Directly show the download code. You click, in the, you click here. So it will give the one API key. So by copy and pasting this one, copy paste here because I already, I already did here. So here, so all the images will be come into your here. So you know, I will run this. Just wait. I, so I'm running here. So what is the YOLO? I think so YOLO V7 model I'm downloading. Okay. I'm trying to download it. This is from the GitHub link. This is a GitHub link. From this, I'm downloading this one. V7 model. Uh, yeah. This was already downloaded. So it is telling the way it's telling me. Then I think I need to mount my Google Drive. Uh, so I need to mount my Google Drive also. Uh, just click on that. It will ask you the Google Drive. I mean, give permission. I think it's already again, it's running to tell you that it's running, running. <clears throat> so we got all the files in the YOLO v7 that, uh, <clears throat> so here we have the train. So to train test. Okay. Uh, this will be that uh, if you want to train your model, we need to use this Python file. If you want to test, you say the requirement txt is there. So here we have the, all the libraries will be there. This will be installed actually. You see, we got a uh, pip install. Uh, requirement of txt 
this pip install recommended txt file can show all the libraries that you need for your model building okay because manually installing us each each uh, i mean python library very difficult and also i already already mentioned in the during the first session i mean during the starting each each i mean each pro each uh, what you call project require different types of libraries i mean different version especially so that is why we they they mentioned everything okay i need for open city python 4.11 so uh, I need to open one uh, like that. So, so if you run this requirement.txt, <coughs> so particular library, particular version will automatically be installed. So you no need to be worried. Otherwise, the income, if you download uh, separately, incompatible issues will come. Uh, okay. Uh, then I think uh, there is interruption. Google Drive mounting. Connected to Google Drive. It will ask me permission. Yes, continue. So I think my Google Drive will be mounted. So now, after my Google Drive is mounted, then I can run this. So this, this all the data cell need will be go go into the our Google our Drive. So I'm running this one. all the data set of that pp kit will come into my drive now so instead of downloading to our laptop then uploading into a google drive it takes time so with here um, so it is i think it is installed what do you call it you can see your available workspace it gives some error so you can see here it's installed it's installed now You can use available workspace to manage. So something the issue is giving, but uh, okay, I will tell you all the steps. So next one is that again, uh, I already told you wait file because YOLO V7 has been used for the, some other person. I'm using his model and his brain. Okay, YOLO V7 uh, training. So I'm using his memory and uh, for training my data set, my PP kit data set. Okay, I'm using his memory as a starting point. And I'm going to train. So just this is only for I think four five lines of code is enough. Actually, here you can see that again I'm specifying the train I'm using. Bash size is sixteen, and epoch is fifty five. Just so you can give you hundred two hundred is very rubbish. Weight file is this one here. So device is called zero means the GPU power will be used. Actually, in the Google Cloud will provide as a GPU. Change run you can see CPU GPU. So they will provide us for a, for some time for one hour like that. Then we can use that. Then we can go for the testing purpose. Or once your model is trained, you can go. So you see that. <clears throat> so after training, after training this process, we are using someone else weight file, means memory. After training is over, we will get the one file that is best.pt. The best. Okay. Maybe you are trained for the 100 epochs or 200 epochs. After that epoch, after so many number of epochs, one weight file will be generated. That file we will, will be using for our model next, because that may be I'm using for my next future purpose. So that is then we can go for the testing. So this is a way our object detection problem will be trained. This is a similar, same thing. We can go for the instance segmentation also. Even it's also same for the post estimation models also. So this is a way we can do that object detection problem. I think so. Um, okay, sir. I think these, um, um, again, thank you. If you have any doubts, we can. So, Benanti, sir. Any questions from the participants? Dear participants, if you have any questions, please ask. So I hope, hello, madam. Okay. 
says sir madam is asking to share the code okay madam i will share with you i think ha ah, i will email madam all the codes so we can share i think in the whatsapp group is there na i think in the whatsapp email you can send bro i think okay. it's not possible to share in the i think in the chat window i think all the madam we will share all the presentations and recording and code also to you ma'am to all the participants any question I think uh, so nobody it has. It seems uh, they have understood everything. <laughs> That's why. Okay, my friend. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Upendra, sir, for your hard, in, insightful, and knowledge enriching presentation on application of artificial intelligence and the ad management system and uh, development of smart vehicle for chemical spraying. i truly believe that participants would have gained knowledge on the key components of artificial intelligence and applications of machine learning algorithms so we greatly appreciate the time and effort you have put into sharing your valuable insights with us and uh, thank you sir thank you for uh, yes, presenting here yes, thank you thank you very much participants also you know <laughs> they stayed in for i think uh, 2 and 1/2 hours okay sir thank you for your valuable time sir yes ma'am welcome It's my pleasure okay sir so, sir please join the well written session sir it will be starting within 5 uh, minutes sir. please be okay, on okay, yeah sure okay, thank you dear participants the validity session will start within 5 minutes please be on the line Uh, dear participants, you can share your feedback. You can share your oral feedback, please. Anyone? Uh, 
good morning, everyone. This is Akhilesh Deepade from Techno India Engineer Institute of Technology, Udaipur. Sir, sessions were really very amazing. Uh, there is only one thing that uh, due to our classes, uh, we are still running second year and third year. I just, uh, you know, uh, you know, missed a few of the sessions. But other than that, the session on Veka tool and the session, uh, today's session on IoT was really, was really very amazing. I hope uh, you can conduct such sessions in future also. Uh, we will be, you know, very, you know, thankful that uh, if we can, uh, you know, attend such kind of practical sessions. Really amazing, sir. Thank you so much. And thank you, team, for, you know, organizing such a good event. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Anyone from other participants? Sir, uh, there is one more suggestion from my side, Akhilesh again. Uh, okay. If we can arrange one workshop on uh, artificial intelligence in medicine, uh, it will be great help for us because my research topic is uh, in that field. And I have seen, you know, we have five uh, research scholars from the same institute who are working on the same field. So it's my suggestion, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. So, uh, actually, sir, here in, in this FDP, total 106 uh, uh, participants are registered, but still we can see here only party 50. Uh, then uh, yeah, we need uh, uh, this encouragement to, towards participating the uh, participant, uh, participation sites. Then uh, this anchor, uh, if, if all those who are registered, if they participate, no, we feel that we feel that we can uh, encourage this uh, such type of workshop. But yes, sir, I, I I understand, and I I can observe, I can feel that uh, tomorrow also in the session, sir said that if you are you know attending the workshop regularly, you must interact, and it's my appeal from all the participants. Please uh, do feel free to you know give feedback uh, it will definitely give an encouragement to the team uh, to organize such events so sir definitely if you will organize uh, five from our team definitely join and will definitely attend the sessions positively thank, yes. thank you so much thank you sir and any other participants want to give feedback Yeah, give your positive and negatives, we can rectify it and we can conduct uh, uh, another FDP also as Sar suggested in terms of medicine. Okay, what are the field you want to conduct this FDP? We can try to uh, arrange this uh, type of FDPs and also workshops uh, completely on hands-on practice also. Uh, please give your feedbacks and we can understand what are the um, positives and negatives. Uh, based on that, only we can uh, rectify it. No, please, all of you, please give your feedbacks. It may be positive or negative, please. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Kostav Kumar Panda from Centurion University of Technology and Management. I, being a pass participant for the event, would like to uh, give 
or would like to share a few of my feelings on uh, the recently organized uh, uh, workshop. First of all, I would like to convey my heartfelt thanks uh, to Dr. Sujit Mishra, uh, one of my bosom friends, who had uh, connected with me and contacted me and even asked me to be a part of the event. So the, the first question which I had for him was, uh, how would it be befitting for uh, me, for a person who is a dweller of biological science, how would it be befitting for me? So then uh, he told me, you just be a part of the event. Uh, I assure you that uh, you would get something worthy out of it. And we would try to uh, associate with each other, collaborate with each other, and do some task uh, by utilizing the tools or the techniques being uh, used in this sphere today. So um, then uh, after hearing uh, this uh, comment from him, so I thought that I would surely make it convenient to attend the sessions, though I could not make it convenient for all the sessions equally because I had some other commitments uh, for my department. Uh, so, but I had tried my best to join the sessions. Okay, whenever I had time, I used to make it convenient to join the other sessions. So, and then I would also like to thank the entire fraternity of uh, uh, mechanical engineering department uh, for organizing such a uh, beautiful workshop. And uh, further, uh, it, it would be my request to each of the resource persons uh, who had delivered their presentations in uh, the different events in, in the uh, events that uh, we should all try hard to associate with each other, to collaborate with each other, and try to do some work. So I uh, would uh, say that I'm a layman to this peer. I'm simply an infant or a layman to this peer. But I would say that I had at least learned the alphabet, uh, which uh, usually uh, make up this peer. And uh, anyway, it's a mighty ocean. Uh, so anyway, I, I feel that I had taken a drop of uh, water from this ocean. And further, it would be my uh, um, uh, effort uh, to at least um, uh, join in this sphere and learn the techniques, learn the tools of this sphere, and um, do some work by associating with my colleagues here at CUTM. I'll uh, certainly make it uh, convenient, strive hard to do it. And at the same time, I would also like to thank uh, Susan, sir. Um, a special thank goes to Susan, sir. Uh, for making, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the workshop that uh, he had organized, okay, yesterday was really, really uh, wonderful. And I, I could try to learn, uh, at least we all could try to learn something out of uh, the workshop. And again, I would request each of the resource persons, each of the participants to join, um, I mean, uh, to associate with each other and uh, work towards doing something uh, better. So that we can explore, explore this technology and do something worthy, worthy of purpose. Thank you all, and thank you, um, organizers, uh, for making me a part of this event. I wish uh, all of all of us, okay, uh, a great time. So that and uh, further, would expect that each of us would meet in some common platform, or maybe the world has become very small for all of us. We'll meet somewhere in some platform and would try to. Uh, uh, cater to the needs of each other. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Anyone else, ma'am? Hello. Yes, uh, we can conclude uh, for further delay. I think participants are also stressed from last five days. Hmm? Dr. We, are, we are waiting for uh, Dean as well. Yes, yes, sure. <laughs> Uh, 
Sir, welcome, sir, Prakula Panda, sir, Dean of SOAT. Yeah. Okay. Now, without any further delay, I, yeah, conclude, I conclude the session. And uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Good afternoon, Dean of SOIT, Dr. Prakula Panda, sir, and uh, Dean of uh, Research and Development, uh, P. Srinivas Rao, sir, and, and uh, the coordinate, coordinator of the design and manufacturing, Sadat Ali, sir. Uh, welcome you, sir. Uh, uh, good afternoon, all. As we wrap up this event, I want to share how exciting it has been to explore the role of artificial intelligence in engineering with all of you. AI is changing the way we work in engineering. It's help us solve complex problems more efficiently and with great precision. From the making mission smarter in factories to designing safer buildings, and AI is making a huge difference. Uh, we have seen amazing presentations about how AI is used in different uh, applications. And coming to the uh, first day uh, introduction to AA, uh, Dr. Sreya Ghosh, Madam. And I thanks to uh, K. Rahul Kumar, sir, who is presented uh, uh, through excellent lectures, uh, machine learning algorithms. And also I thank to Shoshant Kumar Naik. Uh, he presented data mining and its applications. And also yeah, he given lecture through his hands-on practice. Uh, that is amazing experience we have. And also I thank uh, uh, Prajna, Prajna, uh, Prajna Madam and uh, yeah, about his topic, real-time equipment monitoring. And also I want to um, thank to DP Kothari, sir, uh, how he uh, explained AI applications in power systems. And also I want to thank uh, Dheeran uh, Kumar Behra, sir, uh, for his wonderful presentation on applications of the soft computing in scheduled programming. I want to thank G. Manohar, sir, machine learning in manufacturing technologies. And also I want to thank uh, Sushant Kumar Naik, sir, for his hands-on practice session on data mining. And uh, we have seen amazing presentations with great uh, distinguished uh, speakers. I want to thank our speakers for sharing their valuable insights. Your knowledge has been inspiring and has provided with new perspectives. Thank you to the organizing team members for putting together the successful event. Your hard work behind the scenes made everything run smoothly. Uh, sir, Prapula Panda, sir, uh, can you give your uh, uh, speech on this FDP, yeah. sir? Yeah, before uh, giving some conclusion remark, I may request the participant to say or to share their feedback, what they have learned during this okay. six days or the five days. Then after that, I will give whatever the, I will share whatever the valuable uh, remarks. So I request the participant kindly share your experience with respect to this uh, particular FDP role of artificial intelligence for engineering application. Yeah, please. Please, anyone from the participants? Good afternoon, sir. This is Akhilesh again. Uh, I've already shared my feedback, but again, I want to share it uh, 
uh, with the team that uh, uh, the best part of this uh, whole session is the practical hands-on experience which we have gained on Vika tool and IoT part. Uh, this, these two sessions are really very useful uh, due to some engagement with the college and uh, uh, the schedules which were there in the college. We are still running with second year and third year examinations and few classes. So we missed few sessions in between, but overall the, the experience of this uh, workshop is really very good. So I hope uh, we'll see a few more workshops from the team uh, related to artificial intelligence in medicine or medical science. So my research work is basically on diagnosis of ED uh, using machine learning and deep learning techniques. If in near future any FDP is there, uh, from the team uh, based uh, on this topic, I will be really very happy to attend. Thank you. Anyone? Anyone, please? There are so many participants are there. At least another two or three, please. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is Dr. Prabir Kumar Shetty, associate professor from uh, Guru Gasidas Bishwavidal, Central University, Chhattisgarh. It's a very valuable FDP, faculty development program, and the very informative also. And uh, the way you organized is very appreciated by us. And also, you hope for the near future that you will organize this type of the FDP and works of your seminar. So it will be very good. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone? Anyone, please? Okay. So let me tell the few things what I observed from the last uh, five to six days. So first of all, I would like to congratulate Team Mechanical Engineering Department, Dr. Sujit Mishra, Dr. Banerjee and the team and the Research Center, coordinator of that Research Center, Dr. Professor Sadat Ali, Dr. P. S. Rao sir. So really, what exactly we need in the current scenario with respect to this generative AI or the role of artificial intelligence in that engineering applications. And I have gone through some of the presentations also, so which has more insightful particularly for that engineering aspects and whatever things you have learned or whatever you gain the knowledge. So my request to all the participants within the five days or the six days, it's not enough. So you need to practice or if you need any collaboration or if you need any help from our team, they can help you. And the near future also will Organize, will organize lots of FDP in such way that which will come in the, that means which will fulfill with respect to the industrial aspects, with respect to your research or with respect to the current, the research aspects also. So with this few words, once again, I thank you all the participants and the organizers. So it was a, because I have gone through some of the, the chatting also. So uh, all are mentioning that the organize, that means the, the team has organized a wonderful FDP in the recent scenario, what is required in the nowadays. So thank you all. Thank you, sir. And uh, hand over to Dean of R&D, P. Srinivas Rosa. Speak few words about this FDP. Hello, sir. Hello, Bandhuji. Thank you. 
the five day program of fdp on uh, artificial intelligence applications in engineering has been very successful are you am i audible yes sir yes yes sir yes sir okay very successful and uh, sessions are uh, very uh, informative and insightful so hands on sessions but especially uh, software's uh, demonstration was uh, excellent uh, so overall uh, participants can i think uh, benefit a lot and uh, i request all the participants to, um, to forge hands together and so that uh, collaborations can uh, take place for future in future so with this uh, i conclude and uh, uh, wish the participants uh, best best of luck thank you thank you sir thank you so much i hand over uh, this session to hod of the mechanical department uh, dr sujit mesra to give vote of thanks for this fd yes uh, thank you dr banerji am i audible yes sir yes ah yes 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 so uh, very good afternoon to all of you and respected dignitaries on this uh, platform uh, giving this opportunity today to give the vote of thanks on this uh, program so it's it is my uh, great pleasure and uh, deep sense of gratitude that uh, today we are here for the six days faculty development program has been concluded that is on role of ai in engineering applications we have also seen this past few days uh, and i also privilege to gain the inv uh, invaluable insights knowledge inspirations from all of the finest minds in the field of artificial engineering uh, artificial intelligence and engineering first and foremost i should like to extend my heartfelt thanks to our esteemed speakers and experts in this field who have taken and dedicated their time of their busy schedules to share their expertise to us your presentations were not only informative but also thought provoking sparkling numerous ideas and discussions that we anger to explore further i also wish and my uh, sincere gratitude to our uh, organizing committee members dr banerji mrs sri devi and all my faculty members of the department for giving their uh, you know, the proper planning and educations in time make the program a renowned success actually your hard work behind the scenes are very ensure a seamless experience for all of us thank you i also I like to acknowledge the valuable invaluable contributions for our technical support team uh, for handling the technical aspects of the program for this uh, i can say because of your uh, contributions this fdp has run very smoothly and uh, that allows us to focus on this content and learning. to my to our participants i should like uh, to congratulate for their deep engagement 
thoughtful questions and enthusiasm throughout the sessions. Your participation has really enriched the discussions and been crucial in making this FDP collaborative and interactive sessions. Thank you. I also like to extend my gratitude towards uh, Dean SOET, Centurion University of Technology and Management, for their leadership of giving the support and encouragement for uh, giving this opportunity to conducting this FDP a success. And last and not the least, but I should also going to thank CUTM management for giving this whole heart uh, support for conducting this FDP a success. As we are going to conclude this FDP program today, I am enough confident that the knowledge and insights gained here will be significantly enhance our teaching and research inventors and ultimately our contributions to the field of engineering. Once again, thank you all your contributions and participations. Let's carry out the forward for this knowledge and inspirations from the FDP and continue to explore and transformative potential in the AI in engineering applications. Thank you and I wish all best in your future adventures. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, sir. And uh, I want to give a special thanks to particularly hands-on experience we have uh, with the help of Dr. Ponga Upendra, sir, and Dr. Ramana, sir, and Dr. Ravkumar, sir. Uh, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation to make this FDP successful. I want to give special thanks to HOD of Mechanical Department, Dr. Sujit, sir, for such a support and encouragement for this conducting FDB event. Thank you, sir. And, uh, and also, I want to thank all dear participants. Uh, uh, it is like six days uh, FDP um, with your patience, and uh, it's very uh, impressive the way you have attended the six days FDP. Thank you all. Uh, please all participants uh, fill the overall feedback form uh, which is provided in the chat box. Okay, thank you. I'm leaving Dr. Banaji, Dr. Mishra. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for Sir, one minute. We have a gallery photo. Please, ah, all please all of so you switch on your Please all participate, uh, switch on the video. Is it okay, Dr. Banerjee? Yes, sir. Shall I take? No. Ah. Okay, okay, sir. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank done. you very much for attending uh, validatory function. I wish all the participants of the coordinators team to move further.